a 16 gram mushroom trip report posted to the shroomers subreddit by Joshua dude three years ago disclaimer this is a fairly large dose and should not be attempted by the ill-prepared this last wednesday i had the most profound and otherworldly mushroom trip of my entire life i ate 15.76 grams in total the largest dose i have ever taken my last trip had been almost two months before I typically like to space out my trips to the same day once every three to four months, but for whatever reason, I've been feeling hesitant and hadn't tripped in a long time. I've been reading lately about psychedelic shamanism and the ability for shamans to enter the so-called spirit world and communicate with spirits who share the knowledge. I've been very intrigued by the notion of it and feel as though I've had similar experiences entering this dimension before, but without any comprehension of what was actually happening. I made my usual preparations, set up my notebook, had my bong loaded so that I wouldn't have to do it later, the old ceremonial bowl of shrooms weighed out in front of me as well, all the essentials. After I'd completely consumed the bowl of cubensis, I wrote down what I wanted to accomplish for the trip, what I wanted to take away from it and such. Basically, what I wanted was to communicate with a spirit and acquire information from it to help me in everyday life and aid in my understanding of the universe and myself. I've had trips before where I'd witnessed entire lifetimes of other humans from a period in history way back, but during those trips, I only felt as if I was a bystander. I was aware of their presence, but I felt at the moment that I could not communicate nor interact with the entities or projections even if I wanted to. Although, I could absolutely feel they were there, even if they only existed in my mind. I thought that maybe if I focused hard enough, with a large dose, I could communicate directly with one of them. Luckily for me, I was not disappointed this time. It was about an hour before the mushrooms really started to take a hold of me, and right away I knew that this one would be a pretty intense ride. I usually begin my trips by focusing intently on my breath. This gives me a good point of focus that helps to ease me into the intensity and sporadic nature of the come up and peak of the trip. My very first visions were of the world falling to shambles because of what seemed like a feud for resources by our world leaders and an increasing pressure on our ecosystem. There were divergent groups of people, resorting in a sort of tribalistic animosity. Our population had reached a breaking point, and desperation was rampant among all classes of people. The whole globe was in pain and crying out for help. It felt as though a dark sickness had been slowly spreading and contaminating the heart of global human consciousness, up until the point of our destruction. But, despite the chaos, something told me that it was alright. It seemed as just a microscopic piece of time and space, and that made nothing matter. I was not scared in the slightest. I knew I could defend my mind from the sickness and corruption that seemed everywhere around me. It was shortly after this that I was teleported to a completely different place mentally. I'm hesitant to say this at the risk of sounding cliche, but it felt as though my mind had completely opened and enveloped me as a whole. My individual consciousness felt separated from my physical self, and I was in what I can only rationally call the fourth dimension. It was a space unlike anything I was previously familiar with. At first, there were no forms other than an endless Fibonacci spiral, and I was soaring through it. I felt the presence of spirits and entities all around me. They existed in each strand and speck of the spiral, and this time, I sensed they were aware of my presence. At this moment, I felt completely ethereal, like an omnipresent god. I could know the inner minds and motivations of any other thing, because I was in a dimension where at the time, I believed consciousness itself to exist. Some spirits were much bigger and more present than others. Some were absolutely benevolent and peaceful, and some were greedy, selfish, and evil. I sensed that these spirits were what pulled the strings behind our regular perception of reality. I tried to communicate with some of them like I'd wanted to. However, while they seemed aware of me, they also seemed too busy to stop and give me much attention. By this point, the spiral had subsided, and I was in a dreamlike state. After I'd given up on trying to communicate, I thought my late grandma come to me and stay right next to me in this dark and extremely vague plane of floating geometric shapes and empty space, not making a physical appearance or saying anything, but I could tell she was with me in this space. Slowly, I began to come back to my living room, and I could hear the music again. I was listening to tribal drums and flutes. The music seemed to be felt in the very core of me, and I began to dance. I danced in a circle around my living room coffee table while the drums beat intensely, and it was truly amazing. At one point during the experience, it felt like I was suspending a giant ball of energy in the centre of the room, and that ball was just about to explode with light and spread a giant wave of positive energy throughout my whole house, but unfortunately, it never did. 
After about three hours and an intense yet pleasurable vomiting episode, my positive high energy began to turn into a blissful relaxed state. For the rest of the night, I smoked a few bowls of marijuana and reflected on friends, family and recent memories of my life, the trip included. I couldn't believe what had actually happened. Almost three days later, I'm still in awe over it. I took a lot from that trip and I'm very grateful for it. May you all feed the positive spirits that reside in your mind. Don't let fear, greed, self-loathing or any other entity of corruption fill the space of your thoughts. Spread a message of love and optimism to all those you know and meet. You can be a deployer of positivity in the universe. It was spread out as well as in. Peace to you all, Joshua. Language of Energy An 8 gram mushroom trip report uploaded to Shroomery on the 4th of June 2020. So this is my third somewhat big trip. I was in need of another ego death experience and was very frustrated that my last trip failed to get me deep enough. So this time, I took 5 grams. I waited about an hour and a half and when I still wasn't going in, I ate about another 3 grams for what I believe was a total of about 8 grams of mushrooms that I'd grown myself. That is an important part of this. I started out attempting to listen to meditation music, because in the past, it was the music that allowed my mind to drift into that mushroom world of learning. But after a while, I decided to try turning the music off, and just listen to the window AC unit. But almost as soon as I turned the music off, the air conditioner started to sing and speak to me. The sounds it made became a language which my consciousness somehow recognised as the language of energy. My brain became wildly active with this new super complex language that I somehow was able to comprehend and understand that it was indeed the language of all energy. And therefore, I was able to converse with all things, from televisions, to trees, to animals, to rocks, to doors. When I began communicating with the air conditioner in this new energetic language, all of a sudden I was transported into the electrical outlet and from there through all of the power lines throughout the entire world and therefore was able to enter any building, room or electrical device I desired to enter. And when I would enter them, this language would become louder and of higher frequency in my mind. This new energetic language was clearly behind absolutely everything. It was what controlled the function of the movement of all atoms and therefore by knowing this language, I was able to manipulate anything I desired. This was including going within my own body and healing things. And when I would go to heal something in my body, this language would get super intense, as if to indicate that the more complex the healing, the more energy, the more complexity to these words of this language which carried so much meaning than simple language. One word had the power to convey many complex meanings. One complex word had the ability to manipulate atoms and molecules to where simply speaking this energetic language had the ability to heal. During my trip, if I would go near any electronic device, this language would intensify my mind. I was able to learn from that device everything it had absorbed from everyone and everything it had been around throughout the course of its life. Like if it was a cell phone, I instantly took on the entire life experience and knowledge of the person who owned and carried that cell phone. One of the wildest things that happens to me during these type of trips is the ability to live hundreds or thousands of lifetimes within the short span of the trip. This does not make any logical sense as far as we comprehend time. Time becomes non-linear for me during these trips, and I wake up literally feeling as if I just came back from hundreds and hundreds of years living many different people's lives. I mean, to explain, I'll suddenly find myself in the body of a child. I will live that child's entire life, including every experience from birthdays to brushing their teeth every night, to going to school, to simple interactions with their family members, as if I'm that person living that life. I quite literally feel as if I lived their entire life, and therefore wake up having experienced everything that person has experienced in life. As soon as I am done with that person's incarnation, I experience living in another person's life. I even served 30 year prison sentences experiencing the feeling that I was actually in prison for years and years. It doesn't make any logical or rational sense given our world's understanding of time that a person would be able to gain the experience of having lived so many different lives within the two hours or so that I was tripping so hard. But I kid you not, 
I came to having memories of having lived entire lifetimes in someone else's existence. A few weeks ago, I was a long dark haired young woman that lived in Lima, Peru with her family. I came to having memories of living her entire life, and it felt as if it was actually one of my past lives, and that possibly, rather than living her entire life in that moment, I was instead maybe given access to those memories which made it feel as though I had just relived her or my past entire life. I have managed to keep myself aware the entire time that it is the mushrooms causing this effect, and therefore I was able to really test it and throw different ideas out there while I was deep in it. I was very much lucid and able to go wherever I desired to go, and was able to manipulate molecularly anything I desired. I recognised that I was pure consciousness and pure energy, and was most certainly not confined to my physical body. In fact, I was well aware of the fact that I was outside of my body, and for a while I was convinced that I could actually be dead, and that siren I hear in the background is the sound of the siren on the ambulance transporting me to the hospital. But I didn't care. I was experiencing the equivalent of a non-stop orgasm as I lay there having all of these visuals and hearing this beautiful language going constantly in my head. Then I recognised that for all I knew, my physical body may be in a mental hospital right now, and this may very be what it feels like to have completely mentally lost it. I thought maybe I took so many mushrooms that it sent me into this state, and now I'm here forever, and my body is in the mental hospital, and my poor wife and daughter are all alone. However, even though I had those feelings, at the same time I was able to continuously remain aware that this is the mushrooms doing therapy for you, and your wife and daughter are fine, you are fine, your body is still laying safely in your bed. For a while, I was convinced that this incredible feeling of peace and calm and happiness, hearing this language constantly and living all these different experiences, was actually what it felt like to be dead. And in that moment, I realised that being dead is one of the greatest things in the world, if that's really what it's like to be pure consciousness and one with energy. And therefore, I didn't care if I was dead, even though I knew I wasn't. It's so weird and amazing. I didn't converse with any entities like many people do, because I was the entity. I had a realisation that there was no one and no thing of higher intelligence than me at that moment. I became literally no one, in no time, in no place. So much so that for a while, I had the perception that I was in total darkness of space and that I was everything. I was every single organism, every energetic force, every emotion. Literally I was everything. And therefore, there was nothing I could not do. Nothing I did not know. For a while I found myself perceiving Earth as a tiny speck in this vast field of darkness, and I had the understanding that that tiny speck is where my physical body currently is. And here I am speaking fluently in this super sophisticated new energetic language, and realising that I am everything, and I sat there wondering how in the world am I ever going to be able to dumb myself down enough to be able to converse with the people on Earth again. How am I ever going to be able to reduce myself down to such an insignificant existence again, and dumb my language down so much that I'll be able to talk to my wife or anyone else ever again? It was truly a serious concern of mine. I was looking at the tiny little earth over there and realising it is going to be such an incredible disservice to myself to have to forget all of this knowledge of any information, just so I can live a somewhat normal life among the humans on that tiny speck that I know I have to go back to when the mushrooms wear off. When I was in that state, where I was everything while at the same time being no one, in no place, in no time as Dr. Joe Dispenza puts it, referring to meditation and getting into that state, I literally had a perfect knowledge of all things, including how to heal my own, as well as other people's bodies by use of this energetic language which is the mushrooms way of teaching me that the power to heal and manipulate energy resides within us all but we have to learn how to speak the language first. Some people are naturally prone to be energy sensitive, while others, due to life experiences and things, tend to feel nothing most of the time. I've always been one of those people. So this mushroom chip, I feel, was the mushroom's way of teaching me that I absolutely do have access to this energy and can feel it and use it to my advantage, but I just had to have it shown to me in a way that I could comprehend. I'm a post-op trans woman, meaning I had a team of surgeons cut my penis off and turn it into a vagina, at least as close to a vagina as surgery can accomplish. 
I've dealt with a lot of weird nerve pain in that area of my body ever since. Nerve pain that was very distracting and unpleasurable. Well, during my trip, while I had access to this energetic language and the perfect knowledge that I was pure energy and therefore had the ability to heal anything I desired, I decided to focus on that part of my body and focus my energy on one specific spot that has been giving me a lot of nerve pain every time I touch it. Ever since this trip, the pain has subsided. My wife and I have issues getting along at times. I use the trips to process my own childhood traumas that cause relationship issues between us. I was neglected a lot as a kid. I didn't realise it at the time, but being married now, a lot of issues have come up that are clearly caused by childhood trauma and neglect. But what the mushrooms do for me is for one, they allow me to remember the traumas and therefore recognise where the current emotion or response is coming from. The other thing they do for me is show me that my past experience is so insignificant in the grand scheme of things that I no longer have to be inhibited based on past experiences. The mushrooms help me to see that while my life experiences did form me the way I am, I do not have to remain in that rut. My fears and anxieties surrounding certain things in life, I'm able to recognise their true origins and therefore not be affected in the same way by things that would normally trigger me to get upset about something. I take everything as it comes and am able to see people where they're at without judgement. If someone has an opinion about something that differs from my own, I'm able to completely not let it affect me because I'm able to recognise that that person has that opinion based on their own personal life experience, which is far different from mine, and therefore I cannot justifiably judge that person for having that opinion. They have it simply based off of their available knowledge and information. It is incredible to be able to keep my mind and heart in that place, and just experience unconditional love for all of my fellow humans. As I start to come down from my trips, I have learned that a huge key to integration and moving the negative parts of the trip out of my body are movement. Lots and lots of movement. So I put my good wireless headphones on, I put on my favourite dance music, and I go in our backyard and I just dance my heart out for the next couple hours as the psilocybin works its way out of my body and I come down. If I don't do this extremely important part, my body gets this really depressed feeling after the trip. Whereas after dancing out for a while and really getting a lot of purely carefree dance where I don't worry about anybody watching me, don't worry about any judgement, I become one with the music and let myself move in ways I never have before. After doing this, I'm feeling super happy and good about life and I'm able to then go to bed and sleep really good, whereas normally after a big trip, if I do not incorporate the movement at the end, I have an extremely hard time sleeping and end up with a terrible headache the entire next day. The other super fascinating thing about this trip, as I said, I tripped on mushrooms I grew myself. Now this particular flush of mushrooms was my very first monotub. They were Amazonian, and because I did not use nearly enough spawn in the substrate, the substrate was super slow to colonise, and then only produced a total of 17 dried grams in the end. But the interesting thing is, during my trip I also experienced the entire life and emotions of the mushroom. I had a great deal of expectations for them, and they could sense that from me, and therefore they grew up with this sense of trying to please me, knowing that I expected them to grow, and was getting irritated that they weren't growing faster. So during my trip, I was able to truly empathise and feel the poor mushroom's emotions as they looked up and said, I'm sorry mom, we're really trying, please don't get disappointed in us. Eating mushrooms I cultivated myself, caused me to experience everything those poor mushrooms experienced, at one time I was taking a spore print from one of the caps and had it on my desk the entire time. So that mushroom cap was sitting there absorbing my energy as I worked all day and that energy then went into me when I ate that particular mushroom cap. It was so crazy. But I guarantee you from now on I will be treating all of my mushrooms with a kind, caring, motherly love as they grow. So yeah, there was so much more to this trip. I mean, obviously a person can't live the lives of hundreds of different people and explore the entire planet via the electrical lines and things, and possibly type out everything learnt, but this was one hell of a wild trip, about 8 grams dry total, and I feel like I have access to empathy again, and I'm able to see people for where they are and not judge. I love it. Last time this feeling lasted an entire month before I needed another big mushroom trip again, so hopefully I'll be able to maintain this for at least a month. But when I am ready again, 
I will hopefully have a whole bunch more very well loved and cared for mushrooms to consume. A Cautionary Tale A 30 gram Mushroom Trip Report by Psychonaut Psychon Posted to Eerwood.org December 11th, 2006 To the reader Psychedelics have had a major influence in my life in exceptionally positive and negative ways. Overall though, I would say it's positive. However, I feel it is of utmost importance to communicate that psychotropics are not toys. They should not be abused and should never be underestimated. The following is an account of the worst night of my life. I don't mean to turn anyone off of psychedelics. I still take them, even after that night. But I just mean to say that you should be careful, wise, and be prepared. I'd had significant experience of mushrooms before this mental excursion. If you are a relatively new user, do not even consider a dose of this magnitude whatsoever. Circumstances After an unpleasant trip on about a quarter, I now had a little over an ounce of mushrooms left, and I was determined to achieve my head-breaking trip no matter what. Unfortunately, I was experiencing serious second-guessing. I was even very near to the point of just throwing it all out and pretending it never happened. My continued sanity would be well worth a few hundred wasted dollars. I did not, however, heed the call of my intuition. At home, alone, depressed and frightened on a Monday night, with school the next day, I ate every last bit of that ounce. After a couple of minutes, the taste alone made me gag with almost every mouthful. My body did not want to consume this, but I forced it to anyway. The trip. My first impressions were almost immediate. They were not direct effects, but rather perceived and self-perpetuated effects instead. Namely, extreme paranoia and an intense feeling of wrongdoing. My stomach was starting to hurt, and I was getting the overwhelming impression that I had killed myself. The effects at this point hadn't even set in. It now became a race. I decided that I had to get to bed and fall asleep before it set in. If I was asleep, my foolish logic told me that it could not hurt me. My stomach was protesting earnestly. I tried to vomit. I ran my finger to the back of my throat to no avail. It was down, and it was staying. By now, I was panicking, trying to think of anything that might help me. I took papier enzymes, a digestive aid, but they did nothing. I took some Tums and some apple cider vinegar, both had been known to make me puke within minutes, but nothing. My stomach was hurting like mad, and the effects were now starting to kick in. I don't know how long it had been since I ate them. I fought the effects, I tried to deny them. I tried to tell myself the shrooms were duds, or that this wouldn't be all that intense. I tried to tell myself I could handle it, whatever happened. In reality though, I was growing absolutely certain that I had severely fucked up. I made some tea, a last ditch attempt. I ran into my mother, and I'm not even sure if the sentence I constructed made any sense whatsoever. I said I had a sore stomach and I was going to bed. She sympathised in a motherly way and let me be. It was a half-saving grace. I was in my room now, afraid to leave, afraid to stay, afraid to fall asleep, and afraid not to. I lay in bed and waiting, lights out, desperately afraid. The trip came over me in a wash of colour and motion. These were the most intense visuals I have ever experienced, and some of the most disturbing. The best words I can use to describe it a kaleidoscoping gore. Colours and geometric forms and grimacing fleshy masses. Faces, maggots. They spun wildly through each other, tearing and melding skin, muscle tissue. My ears buzzed. My stomach ached. My head was being crushed, stomped on, torn to pieces, 
eaten and digested. I was being consumed. It was like some sick, bitter revenge. Everything was reeling. I forced my eyes open, and my room was a tableau of death. My lamp was a body hanging from the ceiling, grinning, melting, decaying. Everything around me was dead and laughing. I did not know where I was or what was happening at all. All I knew was that I had done it to myself. I would killed myself. I was going to die now. I fumbled around and managed to turn my lights on. This fended off the visions to a certain extent, but I could not really fight them. They came in wave after wave. I lived lifetimes. I died horrifically. I tumbled through endless landscapes of abstract nothingness and exponentially increasing worlds of fear. I struggled to cling to some rational thought processes. I tried to think of a way out. If I called the hospital, what then? If I'd told my parents, what then? If I called a friend? I couldn't do anything. I could not move, I could not think. Everything was spinning wildly. I could not control it. I could not hold it back. And I could not rationalise it. Eventually, I cannot say how long this took, but the visual subsided somewhat. I lay curled in a fetal position with the lights on, my stomach pulsing with agony, my mind buzzing and twirling, fleeting glimpses of nothing and everything. Pain. I could not escape the pain. There was no way out. I had to do something. But I couldn't do anything. I lay there for I did not know how long, shifting occasionally, forcing my body to move. Certain now that if I didn't continue to fight it, it would kill me for certain. There would be no chance. Eventually, I managed to pull myself out of bed and drag myself to the washroom. It was late now and everyone else was asleep. Mushrooms make me urinate a lot. I'd been making a number of trips to the washroom that night. Dozens, probably. Or perhaps that's an exaggeration. The washroom was clean and static. Relatively so. It was almost like a safe haven of sorts. I tried to puke again, but to no avail. It would have been futile anyway. The alkaloid had been metabolised already. The rest was just waste matter. I watched my face in the mirror for a very long time, wondering what I had done, who this was, why I was suffering, what I had done to myself, whether I was even real anymore and whether anything had ever been real in the first place. I staggered back to my room and opened the door. I had previously turned the lights off. I held the door frame to support me. Everything was swaying around. For an instant, it was my room. Then the digital clock's red numbers receded into the distance, and everything transformed into a neon carnival. Towering mushrooms glowed amidst inexplicable shapes, silhouetted in glowing neon colours. I fell to my knees and crawled to my bed. My face felt as though it was dissolving. I was slack-jawed and falling apart, every single piece of me. And the bed held no safety. It was a psychotic raft in a sea of psychotic impossibilities. I closed my eyes and desperately clung to the last bit of reality I knew. They shouldn't kill me. My emotions and senses told me I was dying, but I knew I shouldn't be and I held on to that thought. The next several hours, I spent either pissing, curled in a ball on the bathroom floor, or floating through infinite space. I cannot begin to explain the feeling of constant bombardment. All of my senses were perpetually overloaded, non-stop, for hours on end. I could not stop it, and I didn't even try to anymore. I simply let it wash over me. I was caught in the middle of a powerful river and was clinging desperately to a rock. The rock came in the form of a word, a word that was repeated over and over to me, or perhaps I was saying it to myself. The word was Starwipe. I don't think it meant anything, but I do think the repetition was vitally important. I was caught in this endlessly repeating cycle, and the only way to stay inside and not slip away into oblivion what I thought must surely be death, 
was through this very word, star wipe. I kept it close. I tried to understand it. I tried to search for a way out, a way to break the cycle. Sometimes I thought I had, but I would simply slip into another one and then it all became the same. There were instances of calm. I could see myself, my essence floating freely and calmly through outer space, past stars and galaxies. A feeling of home, similar to the intense grounding trip I had at Harriet's where I visited the Orion Nebula. It simply slipped back into the chaos again though, a fleeting moment of simplicity and peace, then gone. And there was another such moment, and here I regained control. I was able to reassert myself in the real world, to reclaim my mind as my own. It happened while I was in the washroom. I believe I was curled on the floor, when suddenly I felt what can only be described as an awakening or a profound realisation. Suddenly, everything was clear. Absolutely everything. Everything that had ever happened and ever would happen. The why, the how, the who, just everything. I stood and felt the energy of the universe spilling through me. I was invincible. I felt powerful enough to flip a car or race against a photon. I didn't have to eat or breathe or sleep. I could do or become whatever I wanted. The feeling lasted maybe five minutes, if that. And then, it was gone. Lost and forgotten completely, save for this abstract verbal communication of it. Words cannot explain it though. I may never feel it again. After this point, however, I had hit the turnaround. I did not return to bed. I sat in my armchair and left the lights on. I was slumped and barely able to move, but I was awake and I was in control again. I felt pride and a sense of victory. I had won. I had lived. My stomach still hurt though, a lot, and my mind was far from clear, but the worst was finally over. Without question, I'd made it through to the other side. Every so often, I would struggle to lift my head and have a sip of cold tea. It was vaguely soothing. It kept liquid and some semblance of nutrition in me. The more I fed water through my system, the more I filtered it. After several hours of this, I decided I was ready for solid food. I went to the kitchen to make some oatmeal. I sat on the floor while the water boiled. My cat did not know the ordeal I had just gone through, did not understand the hell. It expected to be fed the moment I stepped into the kitchen, I felt like shit. Oatmeal and juice in hand, I made my way back to my room and tried to eat. I stomached perhaps two or three spoonfuls before realising that I was not yet ready for food. I lay there, slumped in my chair until around 6.30am, at which point I moved back to my bed. I did not care if I was late for school. I could not care less. I sat for maybe a half hour before my mum was above me, shaking me awake. The first thing I noticed when I opened my eyes and sat up was that the demons were gone. My head felt lighter, and I knew that everything was essentially back to normal. Almost eight solid hours of absolute hell vanished into memory. I wandered into the kitchen and read the comics. I cannot say if I really read them, but I did try. My parents didn't understand why I was so tired. As far as they knew, I had slept all night. I did not explain myself. My oatmeal, reheated, was perhaps even more unpalatable, so I decided not to eat it at all. I stumbled out of the house and into the cold morning air, and it was sort of refreshing, I guess. The aftermath. This trip yielded probably the most definite after effects yet. The immediate effects were physical, namely my stomach. The gut rot had taken an extreme toll on me. I was barely able to eat for most of the day, and my stomach was still uncomfortable with most foods for almost two weeks. As far as my mind itself is concerned, I was humbled, but also strengthened. I was unable to explain much of anything to anyone. 
I knew that I had seen more than most humans could ever imagine. And I had survived it. There was a secretive pride in that. My outlook would be forever changed. I cannot indicate a single lesson that I may have learned, but it is unquestionable in my mind that I gained the equivalence of a decade of life experience from that one night. Actually, I can say with fair certainty that I lived hundreds if not thousands of years worth of lifetimes in that very night. Only perhaps a decade stayed with me though, consciously. In terms of long term effects, I can say without exaggeration that I was tweaked for about 6-8 to eight months after this trip. Textured surfaces would often move or pulsate when I was completely sober. I would get low dose mushroom highs no matter what drug I took or how much of it, and sometimes my perception shifted entirely into a bimushroom state without any catalyst whatsoever. My interpretations, vision and hearing were all occasionally flooded with non-existent stimuli. I'm still wary of psychedelics. I know the true power now. My head has been broken open. My brain rearranged. I have been eaten, digested and reassembled by the universe. And I am forever changed. Life-changing experience of 5 grams in the dark, complete ego loss, a shroomery trip report. My story begins a year ago when I ran across the John Hopkins study on psilocybin. Having suffered for years with depressive episodes, mild PTSD, slight bipolar tendencies and general anxiety and unhappiness, I read the study results and then read everything I could find. I joined the discussion boards, read the trip reports, studied McKenna and Watts. I became an avid student of the mushroom. Having tried for years to find a solution to my mental strife with traditional medicines to no avail, I was captivated. I had thought mushrooms were just a fun party drug that we left behind after our college party scene. However, being open minded and having nothing to lose, I embarked on a journey to self-enlightenment and repair of my psyche. So I grew my mushrooms, and then I carefully planned the set and setting. I meditated, and I prayed to the god I thought I knew, and to the god I was yet to meet, to carry me through this five gram, in the dark, scary as hell experience that was about to commence. About 30 minutes after consuming the mushrooms, I started seeing the fractals. Colourful and intricate. Nothing like I had ever seen in this life, or could even imagine. They were insanely beautiful, and they were alive with their own spirit and knowledge. I had headphones with Pink Floyd on, and the visuals began to sync with the sound, and I was utterly lost in it. At 60 minutes, I was pinned to the couch feeling like I was being overrun by a succession of tsunamis, each one bigger than the one before. I was moaning and sweating and curled in the fetal position. My last coherent thought was that I was going to miss my son, because surely I was about to die. And so I did. Time had lost all meaning. My body was gone, the present was gone, and I was dying. But the death was only a massive deprogramming. All the knowledge, all the habits, all the history, all the life experiences, all the bias and the cynicism, and all the walls I had built over this lifetime were being disintegrated. I remember my soul being beaten like I was in a cosmic washing machine. My psyche was being thrashed and pounded, and my understanding of myself was being ripped away. All I thought that I was, and all that I thought I understood, was but one tiny experience in an infinity of experiences, and it almost meant nothing. This mental beating went on for what seemed like an eternity. I struggled and I resisted, 
and I kept being pounded against the cosmic rocks. Then there came a point where I just let go and welcomed what I now know to have been my ego dying, a complete ego death. The ego that had taken my infinite conscience and held it prisoner behind bias, ignorance, experience and fear. I came to accept that my life was but a way station, a single blink of one experience in an infinite universe of experiences. There was a part of the trip where I became a cartoon character and my previous life was a sneeze that wouldn't come. My entire life experience became just an infinitesimal blip, like a bugger that needed to be removed. I kept getting to the moment of the sneeze and it never came. Over and over this happened with maddening frustration. Maybe this is a metaphor of this life here and the struggles we endure. We have to find the happiness that is always elusive. The feeling that we are almost there, can almost sneeze but cannot quite manage it, keeping us in a constant state of disappointment in that we can almost get there but it never comes. And the joke of it all is that we have always been there, but it is the ego that has hidden this from us. As my mental walls finally came down, I was told by the universe itself that it was okay. It is okay. All is okay. And I remember I let out a long breath and I let go and I was nothing and I was everything. I was creation and I was infinity and it was orgasmic. I remember floating in space, spinning and smiling and I clearly remember thinking that nothing has ever felt this good. This was who we are. We are bliss and we are good and strong. I cried for relief and I knew for sure and deep in my bones that things have always been and would always be okay. I am okay. I was reduced to only consciousness, floating freely in the universe and I was it and it was me. And yet, I was nothing. And I apologised over and over for the hubris that had defined all my actions on this earth. And then, it happened. I was reborn back into myself, and I was shown that birth is what it is all about. Death and rebirth, over and over again. The death is a crushing of the constructs we have built during our life, and that birth is what is the root and goal of our consciousness and what it is all about. I experienced my birth, and words simply cannot describe that. I was overwhelmed in ecstasy. Nothing can possibly compare to this feeling. As the mushrooms slowly let me go at 5am or so, everything was clear. I was calm and very happy. Life made sense and I was at complete peace. It was like a cosmic rotor router had scrubbed my consciousness of all the sludge that was slowly killing me and holding me back from truly living. Since then several months have passed and I divorced the wife that was a black hole in my life, for reasons that would take many more pages to explain. But suffice it to say that I was given a crystal clear directive to eject this psychic vampire from my life, and so I did. Also since then the resistance that has defined my life for as long as I can remember has lessened. When I get into a sour mood, most of the time if I stop for a minute and reflect back on my trip while staring at the sky, I can get myself centred and calm again. All aspects of my life have improved, and I am becoming who I thought I could be. But by no means does this mean I am done exploring. As anyone who has experienced the magic of the mushroom knows, it's impossible to accurately recount the experience either in person or in print. The incredible knowledge you are given and things you are shown simply wither and blow away at any serious attempt at recounting them. 
It's an impossibly maddening experience trying to adequately convey one's mushroom trip without looking like you've lost all your marbles. The wisdom turns against itself and defies the telling. And as all of us who have travelled that path in earnest understand, with no doubt whatsoever, that our existence in and interconnectedness with the universe makes us both nothing and everything simultaneously, significant and insignificant at the same time, one just as true as the other. Yin and yang, ones and zeros. Some, including myself, have said that during their trips they saw God, and he is us. If you remove the brashness from that statement, it rings with a staggering truth. On one hand we are just cosmic dust with a heartbeat, but on the other hand we are the creator as well as the created. We contain the birth and death of all history behind us and all possible futures in front of us. We are infinite, and when we are firmly in our trips, we are able to finally begin to wrap our minds around that concept. The infinite and interconnected conscience of all that is simply feels right. It makes sense and it is pure bliss. We now know how ignorant we have been for so long with our ego in the way, and we are utterly humbled at the incredible beauty that we have seen, and struck down to our knees at the magnitude of the revelations we have been shown. Our experience granted us a level of peace and understanding that sings in our heart, even though it defies all logic and rational thought. Thanks for letting me share. Yours truly, Robert. Full Breakthrough Mystical Experience A 5 gram of Psilocybe Cubensis trip report Uploaded to Shroomery one year and 8 months ago by Ikshana 8 days ago, I took a little over 5 grams of dried Psilocybe Cubensis And this is my story Background I've been on a spiritual journey for about 3 years Preparation to my spiritual path included the recreational usage of drugs such as MDMA and ketamine especially ketamine, which opened my heart and mind to the possibility of different realities, and a K-hole about 3.5 years ago cemented my unwavering belief in a universe. Since that time, I've occasionally experimented using drugs for spiritual growth, or let's better say, spiritual curiosity. Meditating on ket brought me to a certain depth but never fully satisfied me. I've also tried smoking DMT a couple times, but never reached a breakthrough experience. Part of the journey has also been a wonderful four-day ayahuasca ceremony, where I was shown all the love the universe has to offer. I've also had one very strong LSD experience, where I lost all sense of reality, but it was neither spiritual nor introspective. A couple of normal dosage LSD and mushroom trips were rather exhausting, because I was often stuck in thought loops, especially towards the end of the trips. During all my trips, Apart from the ayahuasca and the strong LSD trip, I was completely by myself without a trip sitter. Therefore, it was hard for me to get myself out of the thought loops or any other negative thinking. Not getting anything out of my trips, I stopped for almost a year. The call of the heroic dose of mushrooms has been with me for close to two years and was continuously getting louder. At first I realised a voice in my head with a certain dread, since I did not think I was brave enough for such a wild ride. The voice got louder though, and I couldn't ignore it for too long. I knew I had to jump in at the deep end. Preparations A couple of months ago, I changed my eating habits, leaving away as much grain as possible, but turning to green vegetables and healthy fats. Pescatarian, ketogenic diet, if you will. Along with that, I stopped drinking coffee, cut back dramatically on all the sugar and alcohol, which had not been a big part in my life. 
So from a dietary perspective, I was pretty well prepared for my trip. Still, I followed that diet even more rigorously the last seven days leading up to the big day. I knew I needed a trip sir for such a high dose, so I asked my partner if she would take on the responsibility, which she gladly did. So we discussed basic trip sitting rules the day before, and I also explained how I saw her role and at what point I wanted interaction. There's a deep soul connection between us, so being physically apart during trips was never good and always produced a feeling of separateness. So although this was my trip, I also wanted to do it in the same room she was present. On the day of my trip, we slept in a bit longer, followed by a morning tea, Reiki energy cleansing of the room, yoga and a final meditation. I was prepared as one could be, but also frightened as hell. Seeing the five grams laid out in front of me was nerve wracking. Although I'm not too fond of the taste of mushrooms, I decided against taking it as a tea, but wanted to consume it in a more raw fashion, so I slowly chewed up all the five grams. I wrapped myself up in a blanket on the sofa next to my girlfriend, who was reading a book, and I closed my eyes. They remained closed for the largest part of my trip. It was 1.35pm, Sunday, September 27th. The Trip I've read reports where trippers describe the come up at such a high dose as being hit by a bus, so I was prepared for a swift lift off, but nothing of that sort even happened. Half an hour passed, and I still didn't feel any different. A very deep relaxation and gratitude for my life in the universe set in, but in a very subtle way. Nothing too euphoric, just a deep gratefulness, reminding myself of a similar feeling I had during my ayahuasca trip. Memories of that trip kept coming up, even to the point where I continuously told myself not to live in memories, but to create a new experience at this moment in time. I became more tired, and slowly I drifted off into a half-sleep, I can't account for everything during that phase, but I remember asking somebody in my half dream if this was it. Am I really going to get away with such a mild trip? I asked a couple times. I was satisfied with any outcome, even a little relieved that nothing crazy was happening. A voice asked me that it was up to me if I wanted to go deeper or not. It was a clear and direct question posed to me. Do you want to go deeper? To which I immediately agreed and deeper I went. I immediately felt something pulling me into myself, into my psyche. My ears closed like being underwater, and I was sucked into the darker parts of my psyche. This was a frightening feeling initially, since I've been there during other trips, and it can be quite challenging. I remember one trip where I wanted to make myself some bread, and while holding a knife, I did not look at the knife in a normal way, but I was pulled towards the darker side of a knife thinking about what power that knife gave me and how I wanted to test boundaries. Resisting the pull was of no use either, it was simply too strong. So I surrendered. It was a conscious decision though, and I was pulled even deeper. It's difficult to explain what now went on, I wasn't really comfortable in my skin. Externally I started sweating and moving about on the sofa. I somehow was still resisting something. I had the sudden urge to take off my clothes, I had the urge to jump off the sofa and beat my chest like an ape, I had the urge to scream for this trip to end, but instead of succumbing to each urge, I said, I'm past and beyond that, can we please skip this part and get on to the deeper stuff? It was like an elevator going into the abyss, there were many dark floors where the elevator stopped, waiting for me to get off. I refused to get off at each of them, and simply carried on the elevator ride into the deep. But it was not an abyss waiting for me, it was death. I felt death around the corner. It was at this moment that I realised this trip was way beyond my control. I had lost all touch with reality. There was a small realisation that I was tripping, and how preposterous I could have been to think that this was going to be an easy trip. I also realised that this trip is way beyond anything I could have imagined or prepared for. Thoughts that were gone the second they came up. Time distortion was huge, and I knew I was in for the long haul. It was so overwhelming and overpowering that I knew I had to fully surrender. But surrendering meant dying. Surprisingly though, this did not frighten me. 
A sense of gratitude for the life I had lived overcame me. Death pulled me, and I was at peace with myself, but I knew I was not alone, so I reached over to my girlfriend and asked her to hold my hand. I told her that it's pulling me, and I need to leave. I told her that eventually all high-dose psychedelic trips must follow the same pattern. There is no escape for any of us. She lovingly held my hand and told me that I must follow the call, and she wishes me the best. She repeatedly told me to let go. Her reaffirmations were so full of love, not worrying at all, so I realised everything must be fine. This helped me to further relax and simply fully surrender to what was happening. I knew I was dying. At this point the strength of the trip came in waves. Some moments where words actually somehow made some sense or at least carried a meaning, followed by moments where I lost all sense of reality and ego. Again, death was looming at the front door. During this wave, I knew I could not stay alive. Again, I told her I needed to go. I remember having the thought of, fuck, whatever I did, I overdid it. This is literally the end. But I didn't want to worry her so I kept the thought to myself. I told her I loved her, but that I have to leave. I closed my eyes, feel my last breath, and stopped existing. This was my death in the most realistic way possible. What follows cannot be put into words. I was not in another universe, but in another reality or dimension. No earthly concepts had any meaning here. No physical laws have any meaning. Time has no meaning. It is not something that the human mind can grasp, and I believe that anything I experienced that did have meaning to me is only my mind translating it into something meaningful for me. I cannot say for how long I was in another reality, but I believe I returned fairly soon to the other reality of my sofa again. A short moment of sanity set in. Then the feeling of dying set in again, and I once again said my goodbyes to my girlfriend. After two or three deaths and always returning, I realised that I could actually control myself in which reality I want to travel. There was no reason to be afraid to die anymore. At this point it was not a feeling of dying anymore, but a conscious decision to enter the other reality and to return again. I was so amazed at that possibility that I started telling my girlfriend about the trip. I told her about the other place, but also that I did not know what information to come back with. Peaking all this, I realised I could be in the other reality and still be able to talk to her. So I was talking to her while being in the other reality, mastering both worlds at the same time. I realised I was fully controlling this trip from this moment on. I stayed in her reality, looked around the room and thought about how clear my thoughts are at this moment. I remember about telling her that I'm there for her, even in such an intense moment of my life. I mentioned that if somebody entered the room, I would even be able to get up and walk around. Then I looked at her personally. She looked so beautiful, elven-like. Her white hair strains were exaggeratingly glowing bright silver. She had this beautiful shiny mandala and fractal aura around her whole face, shining silver, blue, purple and pink. And then I saw the inside of her. Her pure bright light that is of purest goodness. This was an extremely emotional moment. Both of us crying out of sheer happiness and awe. During the next wave, my trip turned inward. All of a sudden, I was seeing and feeling myself as a pure light being. And it was also true goodness and kindness. But it was not only I but I had an emotional outbreak about the thought that all humans are actually pure and good deep down. Reflecting on this thought the day after, I believe this feeling leads many other trippers to the feeling of universal oneness. I didn't have this feeling during my trip, but only after. All of a sudden my mind became very clear again. I looked up at my girlfriend and immediately knew that this was the end of my mystical tripping and I would not pass into other realities again. She mentioned in a later reflection of the trip that that was the exact same feeling that she got at that point as well. 
Although I still had no understanding of what an apartment or what the concept of time is, I was very clear and calm in my mind. This is in such a great contrast to any of my other trips, where a quiet mind was totally out of the question. This was occurring about 4.5 hours after eating 5 grams of shrooms. It took another hour or so to be mostly sane again. Sleeping was possible after another 6 hours. Immediately after my returning to sanity, I was overwhelmed about the experience I was able to undergo. This was magnitudes more than I had ever imagined or thought possible. This was easily the single most impressive event of my life. Nothing has, or probably ever will match it. It was a fully mystical, spiritual, otherworldly experience that goes beyond the wildest imaginations. I returned, and one of the first sane statements I gave to my girlfriend was, Remember to tell me later to either do a heroic dose and go full in, or none at all, should I ever decide to take mushrooms again. I'm not sure this still holds true to me today though. At the same time, I also didn't want to take it for granted that I had such an extremely positive experience. I also had an overwhelming feeling of relief that the trip didn't go down the wrong path. I have the greatest and utmost respect for this experience. Had I decided to step out of the elevator on my descent into the dark, this trip could also have become the most challenging and horrific experience of my life. Naturally, my trip sticks with me all week. I'm still overwhelmed at times, and I have the need to communicate and exchange ideas about it with someone. My girlfriend is there for me, and is also very interested in it. She was the best trip sitter possible, and much of the trip she experienced it directly with me, and it also left a deep imprint on her. At the same time, there's only so much she can relate to what I experienced, since she's never had a true psychedelic experience herself. So if any part of my story resonates with you, please leave a comment. So to give you guys a little background information on my psychedelic research, I've been doing this now for a good year mostly LSD and NNDMT. LSD I like to do every two to three months, sometimes a little bit more or less, depending on how much time I have for this, and NNDMT I do very infrequently in little bursts. So I might do it in a row for three days, on time per day, and then put it off for sometimes three to five months. In the beginning I did more than now, but I think I'll maybe do shrooms now more periodically because it seems to deepen my journey more than I thought, and more than LSD in my experience. I do psychedelics most of the time alone in my apartment for spiritual exploration, and I tend to always have a particular existential question I want to investigate. I also pop it sometimes with friends outside in nature. It's stunningly beautiful, or on a festival to have fun. Don't do that if you're not experienced. The trip. So I wanted to have a breakthrough experience on mushrooms. I had several breakthroughs on LSD, mostly on 300 to 400 UG, or NMDMT, mostly at 40 to 50 milligrams. I got me some mushroom chocolate containing 5 grams of shrooms from a well respected and very good local source. I ate the chocolate, which was very delicious by the way last Friday around 7pm. I did lower dosages of shrooms before, 1 gram, 2 grams, so I knew where I was headed. I put on a very chilling and relaxing music mix on my laptop to orchestrate my experience smoothly, laid down on my bed very openly and meditated into it. 20-30 minutes into the experience, I noticed how the shelves I was looking at began to move in the rhythm of the music. I also experienced a good body load, feeling the trip coming on. I laughed a little bit and said, let's see what you got. I soon should find out. Ten minutes after that, the books in my shelves seemed to defocus and blur out, taking on the yellow red lights from my dimmed lamps in the room. This went on and on until they looked like a city from bird's eye perspective at night. It was very stunning. 
I felt how the trip came nearer and nearer to me, and suddenly these city at night optics projected themselves onto the other walls in the room, getting bigger and bigger, all moving rhythmically to the music. Not long after that, the trip came totally on me. The visuals would be getting very big and intense, and I knew it was time to close my eyes and let it begin, so I did. As I closed my eyes I saw all kinds of joker faces, dragons and basically monsters flying into my face, carrying all sorts of negative emotions, negative thought patterns and let's say my shadow. It was very interesting how they carried that. I know these kind of experiences from an NDMT on set, when you enter into a non-dual mystical kind of consciousness, a side in yourself don't want to let you go. So I basically laughed a little bit, looked every one of them in the eye and said to myself, you are all welcome. I love you as everything else, with a bright smile on my face. In that instant, they melted away into a green, bluish kind of tunnel I was now flying through, seeing elves for some time, and then basically the earth from outer space. It was very cool and I was like, what the fuck's going on in my unconscious? This is amazing. As I was flying around the earth in outer space, or at least in my imagination, at some point I entered the earth again and flew right into a yellow-green patterned pyramid. I flew very majestically in a circle inside of this and it just contained one thing, a sitting, meditating old Japanese kind of Zen master looking guy, staring at the bottom. He was on a kind of pedestal, so I flew around him, all this is happening in total harmony with the music by the way, and stopped in front of him. So I asked him, who are you? Who am I? What is all this? Are we the same? I thought this is the chance to have a talk with a Zen master. How exciting. So what happened? He said nothing. Simply nothing. He didn't even look at me. However, I could feel that he knew I was there. And I was a little disappointed in the beginning. And then it struck me out of nothing the insight. Intuitively, a thought came to my mind, and I felt like it came from him in this moment, that all my questions, all my problems, all my seeking, all the pain and all of the unknowing I put upon me, comes simply from the fact that at some point in my life, I began to buy into what my own inner voice was telling me. That all of my questions will be immediately answered, and all my pains will immediately fall off when I see that they result out of me, believing one side of my story and through that denying another side. And I was hit with that right into my face. In retrospect, this is something I knew for a very long time now. This was, I'd guess, one of my very early realizations I had on this journey. But this simply saying contains everything you need to know to get to the truth. As long as you are telling it to yourself, it is not the truth. Very simple, very plain. Everyone around here knows that, but we tend to want to collect more and more realizations and find out the real nifty secrets, when truth can be found with very plain and easy principles. So after this struck me, the top of the pyramid opened up and I flew right through it into the tunnel again, and then I opened my eyes. I began to cry instantly because the realisation immediately put me in a non-dual state of consciousness and I physically felt how a shell popped from my body, how much energy I use on a minute to minute basis to hold myself together and how the feeling of I am the body is more physically than we think. We always try to calm our minds and focus our attention. When you're in a non-dual state of consciousness, thoughts still come up, emotions still come up. You still have your inner voice. What changes is that a shell pops from your body. You feel like you are a feather lying on air and you are recognizing that everything you perceive is you. Also, your mental processes slow down a freaking lot. You can see how a thought builds slowly out of nothing, has its time to present a little story to you and then vanishes again. It's amazing. So having that, I saw very vividly how I make a distinction about the thoughts that just come up and happen to me and the deep inner voice I identify with the most. I also see that in a sober level day to day, but here it was very intensified. So I asked, who is it that is talking right now? 
and I did what the old man told me to refuse every answer, and I just focused on my will to experience the answer. So I did. I felt in this very moment that I am as awareness letting everything manifest in every moment, and letting everything go again in every moment. I felt how I was still the Big Bang, now manifesting itself as all these people and planets and this thing called me. I got aware of how when I talk consciously, this is the universe putting me up, for a moment and then having a different experience again. And I tell you guys, I cried through most of that. It felt like coming home from a dream in which you was lost all of the time and now you are home. I felt how I could never die and that everything is exactly how it should be and I have nothing to fear. And even when I'm in fear, this is okay too. Because the universe wants to forget itself altogether again, so that it can realise itself again. It's the most majestic interplay that there is. I was in this kind of state for a good hour, and then the shell slowly came back on. But this very plain and simple insight stuck in my head ever since, and it charged my motivation and how I should direct my journey very much. So that basically was me tripping balls on shrooms. What do you think? I hoped you enjoyed reading this and that it changed your motivation and inspired you to go deeper with your journey. Don't forget, the highest truth will be found in the most plain realizations and actions. There is nothing big to find or secret to unleash. Get back. Get back from where you're coming from and you'll see. Alright everyone, this is a trip report submitted by a subscriber here from Mustafar. This is an absolutely fabulous report with loads of deep insights into reality. It's extremely profound and I think you're going to take away a lot from this one. January 22nd, 2022 I'd been preparing myself for this trip for some time and was just waiting for the right time to come up. Didn't want to rush into it. On that morning around 8am I had a decent breakfast and didn't eat anything else throughout the rest of the day. I wanted an empty stomach for the shrooms. After breakfast I went for a 3 hour walk in nature. It was a nice sunny day and I really tried to ground myself and not to think too much about the upcoming experience. After arriving back home from that extra long walk, I took a hot shower, weighed the mushrooms and then had them prepared afterwards. Knowing how potent my shrooms were, I was having butterflies in my stomach and feeling slightly nervous for the trip. I then meditated to calm my mind and calm my nerves. After my meditation I started praying to the universe and mushroom spirits, saying my intentions of taking mushrooms is to heal from my depression, from the constant battle I have with myself within my mind. My intentions are pure and I am asking for mental healing, to be free from any mental blockages. 4.30pm I took 8.37 grams of albino A plus psilocybin mushrooms. I would ground them all up so I didn't have to chew them as I don't really like the taste very much. I took some spoonfuls and washed it down with freshly squeezed orange juice. 4.50pm I could feel the effect coming up, and outside started getting dark, so I went and laid down on my bed, getting myself comfortable. 5.45pm Really needed to go to the toilet at this point, but at the same time I did not want to get up as my head felt really heavy. I began to have a debate with myself that I can trick myself into not needing the toilet. After I think 5 minutes or so I thought, fuck it. I'm not putting up with this shit and I don't want to wet myself, so I got up using the light on my phone screen to see where I was going, not wanting the lights on. I was pretty much fucked up at this point and my mind was being deteriorated, a feeling that I really cannot describe. It just felt like infinite amounts of thoughts going through my mind at once. It was extremely overwhelming and a terrible state to be in. Anyway, after finishing in the toilet, which felt like it took forever, I went back and lay down again. 
From then onwards, I totally lost track of time, but the overwhelming feeling was getting worse. I started to think, shit, I really want this to stop. I really want this effect to end now. How can I fucking end this? Just as I was thinking all this, a voice within spoke and said, It's the Moldavite around your neck. Take them off, remove all the crystals that are on you. I managed to remove the Moldavite pendant and other crystals I had on me at the time. I did that and I don't remember what happened from there onwards. I was just gone. Totally gone. At some point I started to see that I was in infinite space. I was seeing everything from the all-seeing eye's point of view. An eye that never blinked once. I then realised I am not within my body, and I am in some other dimension. What I was experiencing words cannot express. I felt nothing but love. I was love. Nothing but just love. An infinite consciousness. I remember saying, I've died, but I'm okay with it. I cannot die anyway. What would my mother think? She must be devastated to know she has lost her younger son. I began to understand. She is not really my mother. She is me. I am her. I then started to see the entire matrix from the outside. I was looking for glitches in the matrix so to come back in this reality, and at that point I learned we are in a simulation game. The world is not real, it's all a fake. We are the all-seeing eye, the infinite vision, all that there is and all that there ever will be. We are infinite possibilities, we can manifest infinite possibilities. Visualise whatever it is you desire to be in this game, be that in the mind, as all and in everything is in the mind, and just simply be, and all shall manifest. You are you, and I am me, but I am you, and you are me. We are all one. Every animal, everything that has a pulse and a heartbeat, the grass, the trees, the earth, the forest, these are all an expression of ourselves. Destroy a tree, and you are destroying yourself. Eat an animal, you are eating yourself. Killing you is killing myself. In this game, nothing is real, not even your mother. Literally everything is an illusion. We are powerful beyond measure. You are the universe. You are God. The reality that you have created is nature, the earth itself. We are in a simulator, but within our simulator there is another simulation, the system which in truth is a virus within your simulation, destroying all, you. All this is doing though is imprisoning you within your mind and transforming you into a slave, a slave in your own reality. You can never ever die, there is no such thing as death, we are eternal. There is also no such thing as evil. Only love exists. Evil is an absence of love, which in this game so many have forgotten. I then realise again I am still out of my body. I had so many out of body experiences throughout the trip that at one stage I was shifting in and out of my body at will, and every time I left my body, I could hear a louder ear tone and total silence. And every time I would return back in my body, I would be in a state of shock, laughing at what I had discovered, or better be said, what the mushroom had revealed to me. I could see strange colour patterns vertically. I felt and saw just being all the all-seeing eye. I could see everything and see everything for what it truly is, and I knew everything that was. While I was tripping balls, I was speaking. I cracked the Da Vinci Code. I know the code. The Da Vinci Code is the code that you and I can truly break free from the Matrix. 
the code that can bring this system to its end. I really tried to get up and get hold of a pen and write down the things I knew at the time, but I simply couldn't move. I tried to get my phone and record myself speak, but I couldn't function the phone at all. In this game we set items such as crystals, plants, such as mushrooms, and people who come across in our experience so we can find our path in discovering who we are and what we are. Discovering our all-powerful self. I was still tripping so hard that I started to think I'll never be normal again. I remember asking myself, does that mean I'll never get high again? Will I ever trip again? While this was happening I left my body again and complete silence engulfed me once more. I became the all-seeing eye again. Returning back to my body, I was just laughing hard at how fake everything is and I couldn't believe all these years I thought otherwise. I remember sitting upright and saying, we are all one. I spoke my ex-girlfriend's name and said I am D and she is me. I am Shiva and Shiva is me. The experience started to become seriously overwhelming once more, but in a good way this time, but it was just too much. I somehow managed to focus enough to see the time and it was 7.49pm. Remembering I took mushrooms and it will wear off in a few hours and I knew I'd be okay. That really helped calm me down, so I just laid in peace closing my eyes, which felt like I had the most advanced super ultra HD 3D TV behind my eyelids. The visuals were incredible, colours that I've never seen before in my life. Being completely fuzzy I had no grip on time or reality, and I looked at my phone for the time again. It was now 10.26pm. I was so badly craving for some kind of sugary fruit, so I managed to get myself to the kitchen, having some oranges, a banana, some dates, fruit juice and a glass of water. Afterwards I sat on the floor in the living room with an extreme feeling of depression. I said to myself, what the fuck have you done? I just fucked myself up psychologically, why did I take so many mushrooms? I know now that this whole life is fake. What's even the point being here then? What's the fucking point being a liar when I now know who I am and where I am? I felt even more depressed than before. I got up to go back to bed being so upset with myself thinking I'm mentally scarred for life. When I lay down, the same voice that told me to take my Moldavite off spoke once more and said, I just revealed to you who you are, where you are and how powerful you are, and how you are the master creator of your own life and reality. It's just a game. It's just a ride. Almost immediately I felt a warm energy embrace me, and suddenly that depression feeling was gone. And that's where the descent began. Even though I felt absolutely exhausted, it was still the most beautiful feeling of my life. Nothing mattered and I felt so uplifted and euphoric. I truly felt reborn again. I was in a state of pure bliss, peace and joy. 12.45am I got up to have more fruits and played 432 hertz zen music and sparked a candle. It was absolutely beautiful. It helped me to kick back and enjoy my return to normality. I was feeling so happy and eventually I had fallen asleep. Two weeks after the trip and I am still trying to put bits and pieces together and still reviewing the trip in my mind. What a trip it was. And I'll feel really good. I no longer feel depressed. No more mental conflict with myself, and I am at peace, and find myself with a grin on my face. I cannot believe mushrooms can have such a life-changing impact. I certainly got tons more than what I asked for. I have so much respect for mushrooms and psychedelics now than I did ever before, and I believe wholeheartedly when you take mushrooms that you invoke a spirit, the mushroom spirit. 
Mushrooms mustn't be taken just to have a little fun. They are more than a tool in my opinion. They are the golden key to unlocking the universe within you. I'm so grateful for my experience with mushrooms and being healed by it. It's truly humbling and a life-changing experience. Thank you, universe. And thanks to you, mushroom spirit. Mustafa. What an absolutely fantastic report. Stuff like this is the main reason I made this channel to share these beautiful and insightful pieces of wisdom that psychedelics can bestow upon you. Hope you guys enjoyed that. A spiritual way of explaining psilocybin mushrooms. Some background information about myself. Ever since I took my first psychedelic, I've started to see things in very different ways, and my thoughts about life in general and the universe has evolved the past year but something was missing. Before that I was a normal kid like you would expect a 16 year old doing at that age. Drinking, partying, skipping school, smoking weed, not doing anything responsible or meaningful. But that has changed now. My whole life I have had this feeling inside of me that something is missing. I never knew what it was so I started smoking weed, but it was not that. It was a feeling of some connection to something that has happened in the past, but I can't locate the feeling. The only thing I know is that the feeling came from when I was really little, when I still was a baby, or before I was born. To start things off, for a very long time I have wanted to take psychedelic mushrooms, but had a bunch of problems acquiring them since we live in a country where psychedelics are definitely not very common, and getting to know people with mushrooms are often people which are dangerous and scary drug dealers. Since I lived with my parents, I had never considered buying from the deep web. I thought they would probably find my mail, or they might get caught at the border customs, but this time I was so desperate, so I did it anyways and it worked fine, thank god. On Thursday the 12th of February 2015, I received the mushrooms around 10 grams in an envelope. They looked amazing and I immediately whatsapped my friend which I was going to take them with. Let's call him C. Friday I had been waiting all day long to trip. The only thing I could think of in school was shrooms, shrooms, shrooms. So that day I could not pay any attention in class whatsoever. 6pm, I and my friend had rented a hostel in a suburb area and the apartment was quite nice. We did not want to be outside since it was winter and where we live at it is really cold outside in the winter. When we met we almost immediately started to eat them. My friend wanted to take it safely the first time, so he ate 2.7g of psilocybe cubensis mushrooms. This was also my first time with mushrooms, but I'd listened to lectures by philosophers called Terence McKenna and Alan Watts, and they were telling that it was very, very important to take a big enough dose to get the full experience. That is to say, 5 to 8 grams of shrooms. And I definitely wanted to get the whole thing and learn about the universe. So I ate 7.2 grams, since that was my main goal with the whole trip. Keep in mind I had done psychedelics in the past, like LSD and DOX, but I knew something was missing. I had not awakened. By awakening I mean that you definitely realise how the universe and yourself works. I had for a long time played with the thought, but I could never take it seriously enough. Anyways. We ground up the mushrooms and swallowed them with warm water. We did not make tea. The taste of them was like expected. It tasted like dirt and sand, but I've never had a weak stomach, so I ate them without a problem. After eating them I rolled a spliff and went outside on the balcony to smoke. 6.45pm I don't feel anything yet, and since Erowid tells you that you should be feeling it within 30 minutes, I get this nasty feeling inside of me that they might not work. I did not tell my friend about this. 7pm. Still no effects for me. I started to get really worried and I did not talk too much. I just stared at the walls and just hoped so much that they would work. I was telling repeatedly my friend that they will work and it will soon begin, but with a doubt in my mind. 7.05pm. My other friend calls, let's call him N. 
I'd completely forgot that I had his weed and still had not dropped it off to him. So I told my friend that we would go to the metro station real fast and give it to him before the trip began. While I was putting my jacket on I looked in the mirror and I saw that I had huge pupils. This was weird because I did not feel any effects. 7.10pm Now it started to feel weird. But I did not know if it was because we had to see my friend in a really fucking shady area of the town or if it was the shrooms. When we got back to the house I could not unlock the door because I started to trip. Then suddenly I got this crazy deja vu feeling that I had been here before and it mind fucked me for a while until my friend C told me that we had been there before because we forgot the weed at first when we were about to leave to see my friend N. This I had completely forgotten. 7.15 Finally, I started to kick in. I started to see things in traces. It was as every second that went by was a separate picture. This is when I completely forgot the concept of time. Even though I checked the clock now and then, it did not make any sense. So I won't bother writing the time anymore. The actual trip. I know that what I will describe is only a fractal of what actually happened, but I will try my best to describe what a 7G mushroom trip is really like. In the beginning I started to see things in a weird kind of way, like everything had traces after it and the sofa I was sitting on started to have beautiful patterns on it. I could transform how the patterns looked just by thinking how I wanted them to look. Then I looked at the roof and it was beautiful. There were colourful swirling things that moved around and danced so to say, but I did not want to spend my night looking at things because I knew this stuff from before. I had seen these hallucinations before on LSD, so I won't describe them so much to you. I knew that the world could look like this and that I could transform dimensions on how things look just by imagining. I was waiting for the philosophical thoughts to kick in. I started walking around in the apartment while tripping and found a guitar. Even though I can't play anything, it was amazing to just play one single note. I could imagine a whole place with one single note, and it was as if the vibration of the sound could make me create places and feelings inside of my head. At this point we were drawing, since I brought pen and paper with me. I have to say that it is one of the most interesting things to do whilst tripping, but sadly I was so distracted by other stuff that I did not draw that much. Now the thoughts started to come in, and they were amazing. A single thought was a whole world, and you could go so deep inside of it and explore every single detail of the thought in just a couple of seconds. I was able to analyse things in my life and past that were profound for me. I was thrown back into my childhood, and the more I was tripping, the further back in my life I went. I started feeling things that I have not felt since I was really little. And finally, I came to the place or feeling I had before I was born. This was so beautiful to me that even though I'm a grown man, I wanted to cry. I realised so many things at the same time that I could not comprehend it. I finally realised that I am alone on this planet. And what I am is what will ever be going. I am what is right now will be, and has always been. I knew that the whole world that I was experiencing was just me, and I could finally accept it and say hi to myself. I had awakened. Many other thoughts came to me while I was tripping, but I only remember the most important ones. I understood that what the universe is, is just a one single consciousness, and everything is just one. Every human being is I. That is why everyone sees themselves as I, and that the people I talk to are just me, and what they respond to is also me. I am hearing what I want them to tell me, and if I want to change what the meaning of what people tell me, it is just up to me and nobody else. This led me to a big conclusion, that most people these days have forgotten that they are the creating God, not a god in a high kingly or political sense, but god in a sense of being the self. The only thing that is and ever will be, and that we are the god that we want to be. Through the whole trip I felt like someone was communicating with me. These thoughts were not mine. 
It was as if someone in another dimension wanted me to know these things, so I could be part of a community that could transform society. The communication I had with another entity, alien or whatever the fuck it was, had a motherly or female vibration. I could feel like it was a female consciousness that was contacting me, and I was learning things through her. Also, one of the bigger thoughts I had was that life is just a dream that we have forgotten that we dream. In the same way, when you sleep at night, you dream about weird things that don't have any connection to anything, but sometimes you get that dream when you realise that you dream and you can do anything you want. I realised that real life is exactly in the same way. People live in a world that they have created, but they have forgotten that they dream and therefore they think that they can't do anything different in this world. But with psychedelics you are able to wake up, and by waking up you can transform the world how you want. Your feelings, your relationships, everything is like Play-Doh. Your thoughts, your world, your everything. When I realised this I now know why the government has psychedelics illegal and labelled as drugs. This keeps the normal population suppressed and easy to control. The government is the main problem, and keeps us in a level where they do not want us to evolve. And this gives them power to control us and keep up the economy so they can benefit from us without the general population knowing. In the end of the trip I started to have some bad thoughts. Not really a bad trip, but I started to lose touch with the communication with this consciousness and got sad by it. As I said, I started getting bad thoughts and it reflected on how I talked to my friend. Even though I did not mean anything harmful to anyone, I know that I said something that upset him, but I can't really remember what it was and I'm sorry about that. Magic mushrooms were definitely a much bigger experience than LSD. LSD is like a psychedelic trip without a soul. I think this is because the human has come up with it and mushrooms are from the universe. They were here from the beginning. I also think that a big part of the human evolution is based on magic mushrooms. We once were stupid monkeys, until we by accident ate a psychedelic. Eat mushrooms if you want, but keep in mind that there is almost no point in eating too little of them. You should eat at least 2G to learn anything from it. Sincerely, Xyleth. Twelve Grams of Enlightenment A Mushroom Trip Report from Shroomery This trip happened about two years ago. After seven years of using psilocybin it stands out as unique in depth, intensity and insight. I love the Shroomery and just wanted to share my experience with the community. I decided to take twelve dried grams. I worked my way up this dose over a long period of time where I tripped once every few months and kept on upping my dosage, seeing how much I could stand. I do not recommend this dose for the casual or inexperienced user. I built up a lot of trust in myself and the compound over years of experience before this point. There is a great deal of psychological risk involved if you don't know what you're getting into. I was tripping at home and planned to lock myself in my room for the whole day so I had a controlled environment with no distractions. I steeped the mushrooms in water and drank it as a tea, then waited in anticipation. The come up itself was extremely overpowering. Typical body tension, anxiety, racing thoughts, fast heart, purging, very uncomfortable in both body and mind. This forced me to lay down on my bed. Massive jolts of energy ran through my whole body from head to foot. The awareness of my inner body became very intense. I could feel the valve in my stomach opening and closing and food moving through my intestines. At one point during my trip I got up from my bed to attempt to walk to the washroom. I almost didn't make it to the door. 
For only the second time ever in all my tripping, I was so skull-fucked I was having trouble physically operating my body. The attempt to walk was bizarre, disorienting and difficult. I did manage to get it done though, thankfully. My memory of the later parts of the come up are a bit blurry until all of a sudden, there I was. Enlightenment or full non-dual awareness crept up on me slowly without me even noticing until all of a sudden it became absolutely impossible to ignore. I have been interested in Buddhist philosophy for a long time now and established a meditation practice of my own. Suddenly all my ideas and concepts that I'd learnt through this became a living reality. The illusion of free will dropped away completely and absolutely every part of my experience became effortless and automatic. Everything was flow, happening by itself, without any need to exert will or effort. Whether thoughts or physical motion, everything moved on its own of its own accord. At the same time, my sense of self-identity entered ultimate synesthesia. I became everything and nothing simultaneously. This was at least the second greatest moment of my entire life. It was the feeling of complete psychological freedom. Finally free from attachment to the conventional sense of self of being the man in the machine responsible for keeping everything functioning. Finally, I could simply relax and let everything happen effortlessly. I could sit back and enjoy the rest of my life. I smoked marijuana during this experience and towards the end of the day I was still tripping heavy and I think the marijuana contributed to me becoming delusional in a sense. I started experiencing synchronicities in my environment that corresponded to my thoughts. I started to believe the whole world was a simulation, that time was moving backwards, and that the singularity was about to occur, and that I was literally about to enter the fifth dimension and become God. It was a severe mindfuck and not of any particular value to me though. As I slowly came down late in the evening, I was forced to consider that I was not, in fact, God, and actually quite human. I seriously considered knocking on my roommate's door to ask him what year, country and universe we were in. That was how far gone I was at that point. Having to accept and come back to my sober life was very hard to accept, and even somewhat traumatising. The trip wasn't bad whatsoever, but the human brain is just not equipped to deal with this kind of intensity. It was like experiencing a year of life in half a day. Extremely abnormal. After this trip I had an almost two month afterglow. Definitely the best six or seven weeks of my life. Due to health problems though, I haven't done any large trips since, but I'm looking forward to getting back to it as soon as possible. Here in my normal life, I am once again locked in standard egoic consciousness, and it is a burden I am eager to be rid of. I continue to meditate and microdose, and they do help me make it easier to bear. I feel a sense of presence and unity that I never used to feel in my life before meditation and psychedelics. With just a little bit of relaxing and focusing on my experience, my identity merges with everything. The world becomes paper thin and utterly meaningful. Happy tripping fellow Shroomerites.
10 grams alone in the dark. A mushroom trip report sent in by a subscriber. From all those who replied to my previous post, you really did seem to want to hear this, which gave me the motivation to finish it up. Thank you for all the support. I enjoyed writing this. A scary, stupid title, right? Well, I'd be lying if I said the experience wasn't both. This will be a long one, but I hope it's a worthwhile read for all of you who are a part of this amazing community. Anyways, let me start. I definitely need to provide some context. This happened quite a while back, so I'm no longer super confident in my report doing any levels of justice. If I'm being honest, even immediately after, I could hardly put it to words properly. I was fairly young, and two months detached from a nine month rehab process. I had a menagerie of trauma from my childhood that finally caught up to me in mid high school, which saw me fall off a cliff in every aspect of my life. I quit sports, which I had D1 offers in, went from a 4.0 student at a highly academic school to failing out of multiple classes, withdrawing from friends completely, breaking up my girlfriend, etc. I also found myself in some severe substance abuse, largely day binge drinking, benzo use, but there was a lot more to it. I absolutely tried to help myself, but by the time I and those around me realised the severity of what was going on, nothing short of serious help could have worked. After two hospitalizations for a suicide attempt and intentional overdose in which both times I was found unresponsive, I willingly opened up and got the help I needed. This was easily the most difficult and arguably worst experience of my life. But that being said, I am here now because of it. After returning to my life, I was doing really well and was completely sober. 3.5 months in, I found myself presented with the opportunity to do mushrooms. My sister, who I had introduced to shrooms, had gotten a mushroom chocolate bar. I know, I know, save the, you definitely didn't take shrooms, I beg of thee, I was also sceptical as well. I decided it would be a good opportunity to reflect on my journey out of such a dark place and gain some perspective for the future. Prior to this, I had done dried mushrooms a handful of times, yet never seemed to experience a trip the way I would heard it described. I now know that this was due to the laundry list of medications I was taking, which were completely blocking the mushrooms effects. I'm fairly certain of this, but feel free to ask questions anyway. Because of my inability to feel them, I had worked my way up to 7.5 to 8.5 dried grams, experiencing only a minimal trip, most comparable to about 1 to 1.5 grams of PCP+. Regardless, they had a tangible positive effect on me, even with how poorly I was doing, so I agreed. Going into this, long since going off all meds, I decided I'd start above where I did last time, because I truly wanted to trip. I was also a suspect of the bar, and mentally jumped to the conclusion that I wouldn't feel anything with the highly mixed opinions I'd heard about these types of mushroom products. So come the night we planned for the trip, and I'm with my sister, some of my closest friends and some of hers, all of whom I know very well. It was 7.30 when I decided to take them. I read the label. Per square, 1.5 grams magic blend, it said. I thought to myself, magic blend? <laughs> Poor sis must have got scammed. In hindsight, I should have immediately wanted to test what the hell was in the bar. But I was here now, and naively committed to taking it, because teenage me, no matter how rehabilitated I was, didn't feel like waiting to trip or wasting mushrooms. I ate seven squares. Basically the whole thing minus the three gram dose my sister wanted. I greeted the two last friends who arrived at exactly that time. They headed to my basement to go hang out with the rest while I ran to my room to grab myself a charger, realising my phone was almost dead. Getting a bit sidetracked along with making sure I had everything prepped for a comfy and organised trip, I headed downstairs after 15 minutes. We collectively decided to order some food, and over the next 10 minutes of my phone being passed around like a mini menu, we did. Just as it was handed back to me for the order to be placed, I looked to my right and watched a photo of a horse on my wall melt. I would never seen anything like this before. I'd only ever seen minor and faint movement that was fleeting and brief. As my eyes locked with the horse in the photo, the colours all mixed together and flowed down off the frame. Whatever I was looking at certainly wasn't a horse anymore. The first thing that came to my mind was, how long has it been? Realising only 25 minutes had passed, and that a come-up doesn't even usually begin for an hour. I was struck with the very justified thought of, oh fuck. As I looked back down to my phone, I lost the ability to understand anything I saw on it. 
I completely lost my train of thought and any sense of what I was doing. As a hint of fear crawled into my mind, I tried to pull myself together. I got off the floor and followed a friend who was going to get water towards the stairs out of the basement. I tapped her on the shoulder and said something along the lines of, I'm going to be pretty gone tonight, so if it's not too much to ask, do you mind keeping me in check? She had done shrooms and understood them. However, she was still shocked and asked what was going on. I explained the short time frame and how I was already having visuals unlike I'd ever had before. She was calm and understanding about it and walked me back to the rest of the group. As I sat there, the lights became overwhelming. The iconic hum and insectoid droning, as well as the other fairly standard auditory hallucinations began to creep in, as well as a body high intense enough to leave me almost immobile. I dimmed the lights as someone asked when the food was arriving. I checked only to realise I had not only given the wrong address, but never had ordered the food in the first place. We went about adding everything again, and once again when it came time to order it, I was completely unable to. My friends all kind of caught on to the fact that something was up, and I explained everything up until this point. They all laughed in a sweet way, and most understood to a certain degree where I was at. They did their best to make me comfy, showing me cool things and basically set the environment to be as nice as possible. I had amazing friends. But of course, they still wanted to enjoy their night, and I didn't sign anyone up for trip sitting. They all went upstairs, offering to take me with them, but I was still feeling great and said I'd hang back for a bit listen to some music and wait for them to head back down. Really just didn't think I could move with the body high right now. In the hour they spent up there I had one of the most magical experiences of my life. With my eyes open, the world was overlaid with visuals. Their surroundings were not moving, but rather the movement and visuals were imprinted on my eyes and were consistent wherever I looked. Everything was flowing, sparkling. It was beautiful. I felt physically amazing. My whole body was vibrating in the most incredible way. When I closed my eyes, it was a separate world of colours, visuals, and briefly three vague figures made of visual distortions. All the former moved and danced to what I was listening to amongst a sea of complex and ever-changing colourful fractals. I became aware of a joke. Some comedic cosmic troop to life that answered so many questions. I began to audibly laugh at the absurdity of everything and of the revelations I was having. It was my first time experiencing this aspect of psychedelics. As my friends came back down, they saw me face down in the couch giggling like a child. It was now ten past nine, and as I took my music out to spend time with them, I found myself unable to follow their words. When a sentence was spoken, I would hear one word of it very loudly, but in a very soft tone. By the time I had processed and registered that word, the sentence would be over and I would be left unaware of what was said. I tried my best to respond and talk with them, but I supposedly was adding completely unrelated notes to the conversations and overall made no sense. This is where things took a turn. I began to feel kind of horrible, at least emotionally. I had all my favourite people in the world around me, but I couldn't properly enjoy the time with them. We were disconnected. Why? I thought. And the answer came quickly. It was drug use. Why the fuck was I on mushrooms in the first place? Why would I ever do this much with so many people around? This isn't fun at all, I'm completely alone and truly isolated. I'd handled everything about this experience in a matter I thought I'd grown past. No one here is remotely able to connect with me, and that's all my fault. Why was I even at this level? The last time I'd been incoherent as a result of substances, I was in such an awful place. The last time anyone here saw me remotely similar to this was when they were terrified for me, worried about me. I felt so upset. All my pent up negative emotions towards myself and the damage I'd caused to my life came flooding back. Thoughts towards myself and life I believed no longer had a place in my mind began to arise. Emotions I had worked to deal with and moved past returned so rapidly. In moments, the bliss and beauty I'd been experiencing was ripped away by all consuming dread, fear and sadness. I couldn't stand to be around those that had seen me at my worst, to have to see me in a similar form again. I told them I was a bit too high and would try lying down for a bit as a way to escape the situation. I walked off and lay down in bed. But here was where I began to panic. The high and the newly prevalent negative emotions kept feeding off each other. I panicked repeatedly over nothing. I began to have thought loops for the first time. I've never been able to describe them well, so apologies for that. What's happening? Who am I? Am I okay? Am I dying? 
Every time I answered one of these questions, I found myself beginning to question another, and I cycled through them for God knows how long. My mind was all over the place. I experienced auditory hallucinations that sounded like people running around the house panicking. My sister in tears saying, I don't know, repeatedly. None of these were real. There was only a few people close enough to me that would have even heard anything from them, and they were all hanging out in a relaxed manner. I concluded that I had to do something. It didn't matter what. After finally quitting piecing me back together and letting go of whatever aspects of me I was struggling to remember, I got out of bed and quickly got myself to a bathroom due to a combination of needing water and nausea. I don't remember anything past leaving the bed to go to the bathroom. The next thing I know, I'm just on a bathroom floor with the door wide open and one of my friends looking wide-eyed at me. He said he was walking past and saw me in the fetal position on the bathroom floor and asked if I was okay. I'm really fucked up right now. I think I should just go to bed, I said to him. He then went and grabbed the girl I spoke to earlier, and she helped me to my room doing everything she could to make sure I was as comfortable and in as safe an environment as possible. I urged her to leave me, promising I was totally fine, but that it was best for me to sleep this off. She agreed and left me to myself. I now believe that I was so frustrated with myself, and so certain my negative interpretation of their thoughts was reality, that I wanted to be away from them completely, so they couldn't see me like this, so they wouldn't worry or be disappointed in me. My complete inexperience with this intense of a psychedelic trip meant I didn't have the capacity to see why I was thinking this way or how to grow or challenge it. I had allowed a grossly negative perspective to become how I viewed everything. I concluded that it was objective, and all around me saw things the same way. It's a bit funny in hindsight, since I was so far from the truth and spiralling based on a view of reality that wasn't remotely true. It was now somehow 11pm. I'd spent almost two hours between the laying in bed and the bathroom, even though the hindsight made it seem like minutes, and the experience like a full lifetime. I was alone, in a dark room on 10 grams of mushrooms. I continued to experience the auditory hallucinations of panicked people, distraught people. These were contrasted by less frequent noises of happy and ecstatic people. I began to have almost this dialogue in my own mind. Me, or my immediate self, was confused, scared, sad and worried. What's going on, I thought. And then the other half came in. You're dying, that's it. I was confused. Why am I dying? I don't want to die. Can I stop this? What will happen to everyone in my life? I don't want to bring them any more sadness. I felt regret. I'd spent almost half a decade wishing I was dead. I tried to act on those feelings. And after finally pulling myself out of a deep pit, I'd really gone and done myself in. Surrounded by people that cared about me and had so recently shared how good it was seeing me in a better place. The other voice answered my questions. Explained what was going to happen and what was happening. I was apparently experiencing the night out of order. I could hear the inevitable moments, the auditory hallucinations of panic, where I'm found unresponsive, but I currently haven't reached that point in time yet. The other me also goes on to explain that the result is inevitable. There's really nothing I can do anymore but wait. I felt crushed. I was totally distraught, and I was so nervous too. I was sure my own death this night was inevitability, but I simply had to sit alone until it decided to come. I have a genuine memory from this time of somehow having visuals for the next morning, walking around in an oddly white, artificially lit world, seeing my mum and the state she was in after my death, but I couldn't interact with her. When I tried, she just looked blankly at me. It was unnerving and like she was silently staring into my soul. There was another experience like this, that I know, but I cannot remember it. This was likely due to how insanely and unimaginably vivid my imagination had become. Then, as I was at my lowest, the voice started explaining what this meant, what death really was. It walked me through my memories, but this time, I experienced them from other people's perspectives, and then other people's memories as well as future experiences, first people I knew, and then people I didn't. As this happened, I began to realise the reason for two me's, and what I was being shown. I believed that technically everyone is inherently identical but the different physical experiences and developed emotional perspectives from unique social experiences shape the individuality of us, the ego I guess. 
So I was actually talking to an egoless individual, essentially me, if I knew everything, but had physically experienced nothing. Yet there isn't an everyone. The reason everyone is inherently the same is because we are all a single thing or being. Things began to move faster. It felt as if I was experiencing the beginning of humanity to the end, as this line that expanded infinitely in both directions. This also encapsulated emotions and the inescapable duality of them. How the negative must exist or the positive couldn't, as well as exactly what this meant and how it has applied to me, plus how it would have continued to apply to me in the future. Then this auditory sensation washed over me. I wish I could describe it. It might have been some mix of a hum, a whir, electronic beeping and wind. It began to speed up and get louder. As I finally lost any touch with reality or myself, and was fully accepting of whatever the hell was about to happen to me, I swear I heard something to the same vibe of, welcome home. I was face to face with some kind of being. I physically gasped and for a brief period, continuously gasped for air because of how overwhelmed I was. It radiated what I can only describe as everything out of it in all directions. The smallest fraction of it was a singular moment of my life, and how small that fraction was I cannot describe. Though a moment in my life was such an infinitely small part of this thing, there was so much more to a single moment that I could have ever understood. It was like having all the chaos and disorganisation of the universe visually laid out in front of me. The complex causes of everything but presented in a way that I could process and understand all of them at once. It was the closest I've ever been to understanding infinity, as well as everything. How I came to be, what I am, how everything came to be, and what everything is. I remember feeling like I knew this thing, or place. It was like deja vu. It's such a hard part of the trip to remember, but I had this notion of how every one of its vibrations, which were infinite, and every tiny detail of its different ejected sound, also infinite, created everything around us. It was the centre of everything. Truly everything. But somehow, it was also me. I kept trying to wrap my head around it and I would get so close, but every time I pieced a part of it together, I could feel, hear and understand that a pressure and tension was building. The closer I got, the more it built. It felt like I needed to. I had to explain down to the smallest detail what everything is. What it is that which I'm witnessing truly means, but I couldn't explain it at all. Every time I got close, every time I was on the cusp of getting it, I failed to put the last piece in the puzzle. I'd briefly get stuck and subsequently, it all leaked out of my head, so I had to start again. I have no idea how long I tried, but finally I gave up. I simply experienced it all, assuming it was my eternity. I was completely at peace. It really was just pure euphoria. I felt physically felt, heard, and experienced everything in its infinity. The negative emotions which had gripped me so tightly in the previous hours were gone, as if they had never even come up. I didn't need to feel afraid. I knew no matter what happened next, everything would be okay. Not what that meant or what would come next, but that I shouldn't be scared. Tonight was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. Slowly, I began to come down. I hardly remember leaving that state. The next memory I have is being in my room having turned the lights on, thinking what the fuck just happened. I checked and it was 2.30am. I picked myself up and walked out of my room to check in on everyone. I knew there was a chance some would still be around, albeit looking to end the night. I was right, and I had the opportunity to sit with my closest two friends as well as my sister while the come down continued, and it was a classic come down. An oddly quiet world. Rose tinted in a way, but not literally. One that felt calm as if everything was in its right place. The brilliant explosions of earlier had faded to fleeting twinkles. It was relieving and bittersweet. It took something so much more incredible than this world to make me see how I love everything about it. It took an acceptance of what I thought was the end to finally grasp why I wanted to keep living. I shared what was on my mind as best I could trying to be conscious of the fact that they were likely exhausted and not up to some wild spiritual rambling. Still, I was satisfied with what I could and did say. It felt relieving. I finally realised many things that an outside observer would have found obvious in my circumstance. I hadn't gained direct or easily summarised knowledge about what to do next, but I didn't need that at all. I didn't need a completed puzzle. 
I knew and accepted that my puzzle may never be complete. I don't even know what picture I'm piecing together, but the beauty was in the effort and the progress. I did in a straightforward manner, realise how awfully skewed my perceptions had been. They hadn't been panicking over me. They assumed I just went to sleep and more than anything found it funny that I organised a mini party which I only participated in for a few hours while tripping balls. They weren't worried about me because they trusted me to take care of myself now. I hadn't ruined anything like I'd thought. I was given exactly what I had intended for on this trip, in a way I would never have expected. I went in looking for a reflection of my journey as well as perspective for the future. I was shown exactly what I had wished for in the past drugs and my death. Yet my current self found it unbearable and lonely. While I used to be numb to the emotions brought about by this action, this night they rendered me distraught. I saw where I had been and still to that night was wrong. I knew now how and why I could walk away from the past five years. I had people I loved to spend time with. I had paths yet to walk, questions yet to answer and emotions yet to feel. I really had made progress, it wasn't a lie, I had so much to do tomorrow. Coming out of this trip, I continued to improve. I spent the next day with my dad and it was wonderful. My life reached heights I could have never thought possible months prior. I stayed clean from everything other than highly infrequent and significantly lower dose shroom trips for a long while after. Today I can confidently say without feeling like a liar, that I have a healthy relationship with myself and substances. Well, that's all I can think of to add for now. Thank you so much for reading if you got this far, and I hope it was worth your time. There is much I've left unsaid, much I cannot think to say now, yet I wish to add later. But I did want to finally get this out of my drafts. If you have any questions, please let me know. on a rocket beyond death in the search for meaning. A 10 gram mushroom trip report posted by Exploding Snowman to the Shroom subreddit. This report exists because I think that writing things down helps with integrating the experience and getting some feedback could be interesting. The events that lead up to the trip and the processing of the experience are at least for me essential to make sense of it. So this report could get a bit longer and due to me being German the grammar could get a bit weird sometimes but I'll try to keep it compact and readable. I've always been kind of a weirdo, maybe a bit on the spectrum. I never had many friends or much fun, and I was always very in my head, not very intuitive. The situation worsened significantly during my time at university. I wasn't able to socialize, everything sucked. Everyone sucked, I sucked. I tried to get my act together many times. Started working out, eating right and all that, just to fall back down a few months later. After years of dragging myself through life without improvement, I thought that might have some sort of depression going on, and I knew that I needed to change on a deeper level. Having heard of the potential therapeutic effects of psilocybin on things like depression, I got a grow kit, and I grew some shrooms and started experimenting with them. I had no prior experience of psychedelics, and due to the lack of a social life, a trip sitter was not an option. Therefore, taking high doses was of course out of the question for my reasonable self. I tried microdosing, and it did help me to act like a human on the rare occasion that I came across and was pressured into interacting with homo sapiens. That was good, but it didn't fix me in the long term. So I took a gram and had a warm, mild trip. Some visuals and a tiny taste of the truth that should later be revealed to me. It had some lasting effects. I began being more open, and sometimes I even had some fun during interactions with other people. Despite that, I felt like it wasn't the time to trip for a few months afterwards, and I only microdosed about once per week. Then, one day, I suddenly felt that it was time for a trip. It didn't feel like my own idea, but rather so as if the mushroom was inviting me towards it. I took two grams and had a trip that was compared to the first one. More intense, also colder and darker, but not bad or frightening. At one point into the experience, I kind of asked for a bad trip. I wanted to confront my shadow, but the immediate answer was that it wasn't the time for that, 
and that had to heal first. From there on, the trip turned warmer. During this trip, I already knew that this was just the preparation for the real healing that would be coming tomorrow. Again, it didn't feel like my own decision. I just knew I had to go further the next day. So the following day, I took three grams of mushrooms. I always thought I should not take that much alone, but I knew that I didn't need a trip sitter. Somehow, I was 100% certain that the upcoming experience would be positive and healing. I completely trusted the mushroom to lead me to a good place. While I was beginning to feel a bit trippy, I had the realisation that the Lieber album from the band Heilung would be the ideal accommodation for the trip. I listened to that album a lot in the past, but never planned on listening to it while tripping, because I thought its dark and aggressive passages could trigger a bad trip. For this trip though, where I knew that a bad trip could not happen, this music seemed right. At the time when I started the music, I had another realisation. It had been already 45 minutes since I took the shrooms, and I knew I didn't take enough. Sure, I was already having slight optics and felt funny, and sure, the intensity was still rising, but I did think I had to take a bit more. So I took two more grams and laid down. Ten minutes later, I knew that adding two grams wasn't enough, so I did two more for the second time. I still didn't feel like making any decisions. I just knew I had to take more, and I knew I had to take more again, and added two grams for the third time. I was now beginning to feel very trippy. Everything was morphing and breathing and changing colours. All things were decorated with lines of small, complex forms. I was beginning to feel like I'm around my body and not just in it. I rolled out of the bed, crawled to the glass of mushrooms, and somehow managed to put one more gram on the scale. Sitting on the edge of my bed, I studied them intensely as they were dancing in my hand. One by one, I ate the mushrooms, and they tasted great. After that, I fell back and the rocket reached liftoff state. I felt utterly weightless, just flowing there as the shamanistic music was taking the shape of a sphere around me. I connected to a higher consciousness, and suddenly, just for a brief moment, the music sounded almost pathetic. The musicians seemed like children who were only imitating the real thing. But then, the music became extremely complex and mystic. I noticed that I was in a space, and the space was in me, and everything was in me. And I was in everything, and also was not. There was a tiny irrelevant dimension somewhere, in which lots of funny little creatures were running around, who were believing they had serious problems. One of those things used to be I. It was so funny how serious they took the game, how busy they were. Then there was a truth, so profound and meaningful that there are no words to describe it. It kind of came back to me for a while to look at the truth from a human perspective. I looked at it, rather with my being than my eyes, although I couldn't really study it, because in the instance I was looking at it, I got completely overwhelmed by how good and simple it is. I had to laugh like crazy. Every time when I got down from a laughing fit, I tried to look at it again, causing a new laughing fit. It was like a ridiculous funny loop. I think I almost laughed myself to death. Speaking of death, when I came out of this loop, I felt like I was having a heart attack, a stroke, and as if my lungs were shutting down entirely. I was pretty sure I was dying at this point, but that was alright. I didn't mind. Suddenly, time stretched like a chewing gum. The frequency reached a higher and higher pitch as I flew through a tunnel into a particular part of the music. I zoomed in and in and in, like a fractal zoom, but not with form, but with time and sound. Although, time and sound took form as well. Honestly, time, sound and form were kind of the same thing at that point. I can barely remember what followed. I think I was just bathing in the pure eternal bliss of it, only consciousness dancing. After I don't know how long, I re-emerged in the human form as the surrounding music was putting me back together. I was made anew. I believe this out of body phase of the trip must have lasted for about two hours in earth time. Somehow, I must have hit the button on my earplugs at some point, pausing and replaying the music, because when this phase of the trip was coming to an end, the music was coming to an end as well. After that, I was still having strong optics and felt very trippy, but I stayed in my body and had some understanding of the reality around me. 
I was slowly arriving in this dimension as I was lying there in constant, intense happiness. I finally understood. The mystic hallucinogenic phase of the trip slowly faded out and was replaced by an unprecedented clarity and energy. I've never taken MDMA, but what followed felt like the effects of MDMA that are described. Even six hours after I took the shrooms, my pupils were huge and I walked around with unlimited energy. I felt like I saw everything for the first time, which was in a way true, because I was a new person. I felt so natural and happy. For the first time since I can remember, the judging, criticizing, grumpy voice in my head was completely silent. After the trip, that launched me far out of this reality. I was more present than I had ever been, and reality felt more real than it ever did before. I'd never been so sober. Now, a few days later, I'm still positively different. Every time I look at a tree, or water, or clouds, I see these things like I've seen them as a child. Everything is clear and alive. Things that I used to perceive as huge problems just don't bother me anymore. I want to meet people and do peoply things. I have the feeling that a lot is going to change. Naturally, I was thinking intensely about the experience these days and tried to understand what happened. I wondered how a spiritual event of such magnitude was even possible, and whether I had to reconsider my agnosticism. Did I truly visit a metaphysical dimension that is more real than this one? Was my intense happiness the result of my experience? Or was my experience just a rationalisation of my subconsciousness to explain my euphoria that was caused by chemicals that flooded my brain? The realisations I had can't just have been meaningless nonsense. Objectively speaking, because instead of everyone's brain making up something else, other people who go on this journey seem to have similar realisations as mine. Subjectively, because I know that the truth I saw was self-evident. It was as logical as the statement that 2 plus 2 equals 4. I think either the spiritual metaphysical explanation is true, or the experience is a spiritual projection of a truth that could be materialistically explainable, and that lies hidden in everyone's subconsciousness, and reveals itself to us in such a way that we can understand it best. So right now, I'm still agnostic, but I'm convinced that the realisations I had are in a way true, and that the experience was deeply meaningful and profound. I know, taking 10 gram of mushrooms unprepared without a trip sitter in a not so good life situation is generally not advised, and maybe it would go wrong in most cases, but for me, it didn't start a horror trip, it ended one. A 20 gram mushroom trip report, posted to the Shroom subreddit seven years ago by the user Yeargood. When I first started my mushroom journey, I had no idea where it would lead me. I mean, once you start taking mushrooms, you start removing layers of bullshit that life has been throwing at you during your entire existence. It's almost like all the choices you've made in your life have brought you this far, and the more you learn, the more you feel like you have made the right choices along the way. It's a delicate balance of understanding how to align yourself with who you are in life to whom you are supposed to be. Once you start to trust what the mushroom is telling you, you become more certain of your future. In my case, after this 20 gram trip, I feel like the liapan of time of my choices is already predicted, and now it's just a matter of me experiencing it. It's a feeling I am certain of, or else I wouldn't be here writing you this. It's weird. All the little binary choices in my life, fear versus courage, love versus hate, action versus inaction, commitment versus quitting, as well as faith versus unbelief and trust versus betrayal, all of them, they're aligning into a destiny. It's kind of like the transformation of a car that can go anywhere, compared to a train that is stuck on tracks. This 20 gram trip felt like a reward for me. This has been a really difficult week for myself. i had been tested in ways I didn't know how to respond to, didn't know what to do. The best analogy I can come up with is that of your boss coming into your office and throwing you a general outline of his plan and telling you, you have one week to plan and one month to execute. When you are given that task, you look at it and you feel like there is no fucking way in hell you can accomplish that. You work and work on it, day and night, stressing about it all the time. Your job literally depends on it. At some point, you feel like quitting, like there's no way you can do what you're supposed to do. 
you decide that you have no choice and you commit. After the week has passed, you come into your boss's office and show him what you have accomplished. You know that the competition would crush you if you executed that plan. When you present the plan to the boss, he looks over it and gives you a smirk. You don't quite understand what just happened and ask him why he's smirking. He looks at you and says, When I gave you that task in the timeline provided, I always knew it was impossible. I just wanted to test you and your trusted staff. I just wanted to see the mistakes you would make so we can work on correcting them. Your deadline is not a month from now, it's actually two months from now. Fucking bosses, they can be a pain in the ass. When this happens, you don't know what to feel. Relief or anger. Boss looks back at you and says, I always knew you could do it. I just wanted to see what kind of commitment you would put to the task. I just wanted to test you. I just wanted you to believe in you. This is the type of commitment a 20 gram trip brings. Imagine being thrown out in the ocean. Does it matter if you are 10 or 20 miles from shore? There's no point in asking where you are. You just take the leap. As for the trip itself, well, it went something like this. After I played and laughed with my kids for about four hours, they went to bed and I ground the mushroom up, letting it soak in the lemon juice. As I was waiting, I laid in bed with my oldest daughter. I wanted to fill my heart with as much love as I could muster. I knew that there was no way I could pass through the eye if my heart wasn't filled with love. Think Grace versus Jake Sully and Avatar. As I laid in bed with her, waiting for the lemon juice to do its magic, I ended up falling asleep. I woke up around 3am and proceeded to take the dose. Now, you have to understand that this is the hardest part, chugging the concoction down. After it was in, I went outside and lay down on the floor, looking up at the stars, waiting for the mushrooms to hit. It's a mixture of pain and nausea, hitting your gut and your body all at once. As I laid there, I closed my eyes and the visuals start popping up. Pink, purple and blue fractals, snowflaked shapes, lines everywhere. After a while, a mosquito started buzzing around my ear. I got up and started walking, thinking and coming to conclusions about my life. After a while, I just collapsed on the floor. Next thing I remember, I am laughing uncontrollably. Think Jesse Pinkman drooling and yelling, seeing an inside joke the universe is playing on humanity that no one else can see. Best way I can describe it would be having a ball of infinite energy inside you, and you being able to feel that ball. It's like you're able to touch it. Now I don't know how long I was like this. All I know is that after laughing uncontrollably for a while, I remember my wife coming out to see what was going on. It was like I was a crying baby, and she wanted to shut me up. Except, I wouldn't. I just looked her in the eye with those mad expanded pupils and kept at it. It was beautiful. That feeling of white, pure, energetic rage inside you. Something indescribable, and a memory I will cherish for the rest of my life. After some time like this, the mad laughing stopped and I somehow mustered strength to go to bed. There, I just laid down and stayed in a catatonic state for a while, my mind still reeling. I was the happiest I have been in a long time. As far as my next heavy trip goes, I don't know when that will happen, but when it does, I'll be sure to post here with you guys. Always with love, year good. 10 gram mushroom trip report, sent in by a subscriber. A few months ago, I decided to take 10 grams of mushrooms. I came to this decision because for the last few trips, I'd been increasing the dosage but didn't have any new realisations. In fact, the deepest insight I had up to that point came from the first time I ever took shrooms, and the dose there was only 1.7 grams. I think in many ways, I was trying to recreate that experience by increasing the dosage. This time, I'd be sure the dose wasn't the limiting factor. All my prior trips occurred in nature, taking walks or being driven around. I'd heard of tripping blindfolded and decided that's what I'd do this time. I told my mother I'd be tripping and that I'd be doing it in my room so that she doesn't disturb me. Before the ingestion, I made a playlist of the music I'd be listening to on the trip. I put some songs in there that I'd never actually listened to but heard a clip of and felt the trippy enough. Everything was in place and so I took the shrooms. There was so much of them that I couldn't do it in one mouthful. The taste was never to my liking and this time it was especially so. After taking the second mouthful, I felt nauseous. A feeling of excitement and nervousness had come over me. The sheer volume of the meal made some alarm bells go off in my brain. But I calmed down. The nausea was gone and I was sitting on the bed in my room, waiting for the effects to begin. Since I didn't want to waste the playlist while I wasn't under the influence, I put on some random jazz on YouTube. The first thing that gave away that it was starting 
was that a musical phrase in a song sounded particularly repetitive. I thought to myself, okay, let's go. Put the blindfold on and the headphones and put on the meticulously chosen playlist. I don't remember the come up all too well, but I knew I was enjoying the music. One of the songs in the playlist that I'd never heard before was Pink Floyd's Echoes. I was loving it, especially the middle groovy part. However, unbeknownst to me, the song has a dark, haunting section. As it started, I tried to withstand it by telling myself, I'm fine, just keep calm and this part of the song will pass. A few minutes in and I'd had enough, I ripped my headphones off and the blindfold and was back in the familiar surroundings of my room. Very suddenly, I was extremely sober. I mumbled to myself, wow, it's irresponsible to put that in there, referring to the music as if it had been written for my trip. I tried getting up, but realised my balance wasn't as good as I thought it was, and so I sat back down, put everything back on, and some new music as well. This is where the trip really started. The usual wave-like nature of tripping was nowhere to be found, and from here on out, it was a steady crescendo. This is where I lost time perception, so the following events are not necessarily in the right order. I started to blend in with the music. There was no boundary where I stopped and the music started. Everything was one. All my senses were appearing in the same dimension. I was moving my hands and feet as if I were the conductor. These movements were themselves part of the beautiful object. Every few moments, I was surprised that the intensity could actually increase. The usual advice to relax into the experience had no meaning. It couldn't be applied any more than advice to avoid burns could be applied on the surface of the sun. I started feeling this boundless love for everything. I thought of my father, who died half a year earlier, and I started crying. He knew he was dying, so I remembered noticing fear and worry throughout his last weeks. I just wanted to show this to him, what I was experiencing right now, if I could only show him how beautiful it can be. Then I thought of my mother, and how I don't show her that I love her enough. Yet again, I was crying, and wanted to hug her so tight I'd probably break her ribs. My attention then turned again to the music. I knew the kind of music that should be playing, but I was surprised that I couldn't recognise it. What should have been a simple, straightforward blues sounded like something being played by ten orchestras. Here was a piece of music I'd listened to hundreds of times, and yet it was so much more beautiful than before. How did I miss this? Do I miss beauty like this in every moment? This realisation of how clothed my eyes usually are to beauty in plain sight made me cry once more. As impossible as it sounds, things were still getting more and more intense. My visual field was in a complete whiteout. It felt like love was tearing apart the fabric of consciousness itself. I was laughing and crying at the same time. Every pixel of awareness was shining with the intensity of the sun. I remember having some sort of realisation and thinking to myself, how do I explain this to others? And then a moment later realising, how can I hide this? I couldn't even if I wanted to. Funnily enough, I can't remember what it was now, but the insights kept on coming. There was a pervasive feeling that all of consciousness is one, the exact same thing. I remembered a friend with whom I talked about things of that sort, and was firmly convinced that if I could talk to him, I would easily convince him that we are the same person. The intensity had subsided a bit, or so I thought, but the depth was still there. What's the difference between existence and non-existent anyway? I had some intuitive answer to this question that I couldn't put into words, but I felt it in my gut. The closest thing that I can remember now is that they are the same thing, like two sides of the same coin. Even though none of this makes too much sense to me now, at that moment, the feeling was of profound clarity. I remember at some point or another thinking that I was God, and everyone else was God too. It was as though this is something I forgot, but could now remember. I knew I'd forgot it again, but I was fine with that. At some point, my mother came into my room, and all I could tell her was that I loved her. Then, I remember staring at my hand, and it was disappearing as if a black hole was at the centre of my consciousness, and was sucking everything in. Everything that makes me was starting to disappear, and it wasn't so fun anymore. I was suddenly on the wrong side of all this. I sat up on the bed and looked out of the door of my room. It had gone dark outside and the light was on in the living room. My room felt like a dungeon. I sat up again, not knowing that I laid down at all. 
I was now stuck in this loop. It felt like I lived through all this a million times. Oh my god, I've gone insane. I heard people can go insane, but now I'm actually one of those people. My mother has a madman in her flat. My mother came into my room a few times and asked if I was okay, but all I could say was, I want it to continue. She had no idea what I was talking about, but was visibly worried. I just wanted normality to continue. I was begging to have back my unenlightened, dull mind. My friend called me on the phone and asked how the trip was going. I just grunted something like, wow, and sighed. He asked was it good or bad, and I replied, it's not good right now. He started giving me the before mentioned standard advice, just let it be, relax into it, and so on. I told him to stop saying these things because in my mind I was hanging on by a thread and if I took his advice I'd completely spiral into insanity. He made me promise to call my girlfriend. After we hung up I tried operating the phone but was completely unable to do so. The loop I was in kept repeating and repeating. I'd sit up, walk a bit around my room and sit down again. There were still waves of insight but at that point I couldn't tell them apart from the psyche of a madman. I was undeniably in a bad trip now. I started thinking that everything that could ever happen will happen. Consciousness will take on every form it can, and this means that somewhere in some universe I will live a life of pure misery. I don't know how much influence there was from a TV report on the Ukraine war that was playing in the background, but I started picturing myself being tortured. I was absolutely certain that I'd have to live through all of this. In the midst of all this, I got a call from my girlfriend, since the news of my bad trip had spread from my friends to her. She asked me if I wanted to come over. I did, but didn't want to say it, because if I admitted I needed help, then all this was somehow more real than before. In the end, I caved and told her to come over. I headed into the living room where both my mother and my brother were sitting down. I wasn't sure how bad I looked to them. Later, they told me I was constantly repeating things like, Why doesn't it just continue? My normal life, that is. The dread of having to live through all the possible bad things that could ever happen was at times interrupted by the realisation that the worst part of all this was the actual panic and dread I was feeling at this moment, so it's almost like I already managed to live through it. But then, the horror returned, and this loop continued a few times. I then looked at my brother's face to try and find clues if I'd really gone mad. He was watching a basketball game and seemed disinterested. I took his calm demeanour to mean that I'd lost my mind a long time ago and that my insanity was no news to him. Was my life just a figment of my own imagination? I sat down on the floor and lived through a bit more of this. And then, in a moment, everything returned. I was sane and good again. I sat up and said, oh, I'm good, with a sigh of relief to my mother. But as I was saying those words, everything was just gone again. All my knowledge. I kept reassuring myself, I'm back, I'm back, as if saying those words would help me. My mother was looking at me so as to give myself more reassurance and I asked her, Em's coming over right? Referring to my girlfriend. Em? Who? At that point, all my ships had sunk and I was absolutely sure I'd imagined my own girlfriend. Mm, I don't know if she's coming over, my mother said. Ah, oh, more relief. I didn't imagine her. She's a real person. But did I imagine talking to her before? A minute later and the doorbell rang and I opened it immediately. She entered the house, said hi to my mum and brother and asked how I was. I didn't know what to tell her. I was still on the seesaw of insight and horror. In one moment, I was sure the most horrific things will start happening. In the next, I was contemplating what to do now that I knew everything. Just live an honest and good life, trying to help as best you can. But how can you do this when there's so much misery in the world? Misery that I'll have to go through. And on and on it went, the loop. One thing that kept me sane was the clock on the kitchen stove. At least time was still moving in the right direction. Unfortunately, the bad patches were getting worse and violent thoughts started appearing. I'd feel like I can control in which of the branches of possibility the universe will go. And then when something appeared that I didn't control, I'd go in the complete opposite direction thinking I can't control anything, including myself. If everything is going to happen, then there's a universe where I kill everyone in this house. No, this can't be that universe. 
Then, as if from another entity, came the thought, well, if it's going to happen, you might as well do it fast. I was so scared I might do something horrible at that moment. My girlfriend was on the phone with the friend that originally called me. He told her to give me some diazepam, which would bring me down. She relayed the idea to me, and I was immediately convinced. I told her I have some in my car, and she went to search for it. I started feeling sleepy, almost lethargic, and when she finally gave me the drug, I immediately went to bed. After this, I started to feel a bit more like myself. My girlfriend lay next to me, and we talked silently. The conversation was good for my mind, and for the first time in ages, I saw a light at the end of the tunnel. As I returned to sanity, I felt great. Calm, grounded, and more of myself than before. I told my girlfriend repeatedly that I loved her, and the experiences I've had on this trip. She took a picture of us and sent it to my friends so they knew I was okay. When I fully got back to normalcy, I went back to the living room and told my mum I was okay as well. She was relieved, and we hugged. I don't think I'd ever felt such gratitude to just being myself. All in all, it was a great trip, and I even learned a lot from the horrible phases as well. It really made me appreciate what it must be like to be an insane person, and it's not an experience I can recommend. The main takeaway from the trip was to just try and be the best person I can, and be honest with the people in my life. However, as good as the trip was, I'm not going to be doing that kind of dose anytime soon, maybe ever. The mind is too precious an instrument to throw away. The Darkest Night, a 7.5 gram dry mushroom trip report sent in by a subscriber. A day prior, I did mushrooms for the first time in a hotel away from home, two grams in the form of chocolate edibles in the space of one hour. I heard chocolates are always made with dry mushrooms in order to last for shipments. I was vibing with an ex-meth addict of 10 years for hours outside and met a few Nigerians having a ballroom party of some kind. I found my emotions to be vulnerable, and I felt I could see the true nature of people around me. When I returned to the room, I saw insects, sea creatures and mammals in paintings, and the marble tile in the bathroom. I laughed and talked to myself in the mirror, saying how it's a scheme of the government to keep mushrooms illegal in order to keep people depressed and unawakened. I couldn't believe the tile, ceilings and blankets were moving. I was fascinated by this, and was curious to try a higher dose the next day. I bought two 4 gram chocolate bars after being in a sulky and angry mood due to many of my unresolved traumas and limiting beliefs about myself still pervading my mind. I wanted a blank slate. I wanted to change my thinking at whatever cost. I hate the way I see things, like I'm blind to what others are able to see, or perhaps I am blind to what I should be seeing. Ever since I got depression and schizoaffective disorder, I felt mushrooms were the only way out. Start of the trip. I needed novelty. I came home in a bitter mood and self-sabotaging thoughts that continually returned to me. With my mental disorder, I hear whispers directly into my head. It told me a couple of times, you're in for a rude awakening. I ate one of the bars quite quickly and sat around and went on a walk as the sun was setting. I felt the come up, but the sensations weren't quite strong enough. T plus one hour. I went back out for a night walk and listened to some dark techno music putting me into a morbid mindset. A guy came up behind me and we started talking about weed and mushrooms and how he broke free of it. He said he got schizoaffective too and hears voices and thought he even started COVID. I thought I started COVID too, I replied, and both laughed at such a crazy coincidence. We talked for a bit and decided to connect and we each went back to our homes. T plus two hours. I truly felt this dosage wasn't enough. I really wanted to restart on a blank slate and reset my mind. I said to myself, fuck it, fuck this mindset, I'm fucking done with this shit. I started eating more and more of the second bar. By the time I got one half of the way through, my intuition said stop, but I ignored it and proceeded to eat almost all of it. Right when I finished my last bite, warning signals were popping off in my head. My mind vividly thought of the scene from the movie Predator, where behind Arnold Schwarzenegger the green blood appears to drizzle down right behind him, and the predator is right there. I sensed some entity or spirit behind me as well, and it felt sinister. I had a bad feeling about this, like an alarm on red alert was tripped on. Suddenly, 
I felt like I was integrating into the room around me. The walls were closing in on me. The floor was rising like water flooding into a cell. I felt myself being engulfed in my bed. I felt like I was falling apart. I perceived everything around me was engulfing me like a white blood cell eating some parasite. I thought I've just got to let this go. I've done this before on DXM. Stop resisting and go with it. Just go with the trip. But there was no going with it. The house I was in was suffocating me, and it felt like space was collapsing in around me. There was no way to trick my mind into thinking this was only my perception. The perception is reality, and seems definite. I realised as I was becoming consumed by the environment, and there was no way for me to let go. I took too high of a dose too soon, and my mind wasn't ready. Panic was setting in, and a deep terror filled me. Like this was the way, it always will be, and I'm doomed if I don't do something. It was after late at night, and there was no one I could talk to. I was on my own on this one. All I could think of was to throw on my shoes and run. I found my shoes as they were sinking into the tile like quicksand, put them on, stepped out of it and started running as fast as I could. I turned on some Dragon Ball Z music to strengthen my mindset, and it made the experience extremely intense. It was though some entity outside the simulation was trying to kill me. I felt if I didn't run, I would suffocate to death. Even when I was outside, I was in full panic mode and it wasn't stopping. The music didn't help, so I turned it off. Time was slowing down like being near the event horizon of a black hole. It seemed like as I ran, the pavement kept extending such that I was making no progress. Space squished around me, and such that the houses, vine lace walls and trees were creating a tunnel around me. As I looked around, all I could see were different faces in every object in the night. I realised everything around me, even the pavement and grass, is sentient. Just like Terence McKenna said, there is sentience in everything. Now it hit me. Now I knew what he was talking about. Sprinting alone in the dark, creating this wormhole I was going through, as everything moved and shifted around me. As I made my way back home, I had to walk, and I felt like I may be coming down from it, but no. This piano black night was just beginning to kick into overdrive. As soon as I got home to light a cigarette to calm myself down, it's like everything reactivated and I just couldn't calm down at all. I started sinking into the walkway in my house, and as I went back into the street it was churning like melted chocolate. I bolted again, with the pavement seemingly moving upward like climbing a rolling hill, and it felt like I was walking on water. I started running again to sweat it out somehow and get oxygen into my brain. I ran all the way across town for what seemed like forever. Part of the reason I didn't want to just chill was because if I risked not getting this out of my system, I could go back to a chronic psychotic episode I once had, where I'd be hearing voices harassing and attacking me, seeing spectres, images, and writing on a screen appearing in my vision in front of me. I didn't want a chance at that happening again, so I greatly feared I would permatrip again. As I ran, I felt completely abandoned and alone. My footsteps reverberated, and it felt like I was going through hyperspace. It's so hard to describe the myopia of the despair that I felt. I ran to apologise to everyone in the physical and spiritual realm in an attempt to gain sympathy to break this chronic panic attack, if you could call it that. I called out to whatever may be out there, but nothing answered in return. I was all alone. I was convinced this is where it all ends and begins. I felt God has broken my soul and mind into a million pieces and abandoned me, and I am in this mental wimp of some kind. I felt the world is ending. I'm the last person left alive, and all of the living and dead are gone. It feels like the end of time itself, that I was where life ends. I feel like I'm falling apart. I have to somehow hold on to my mind. I have to somehow keep my soul. I realise my mind is my essence, and if I lose my essence, I will no longer exist. As I look around at everything around me, I feel this distorted perception of reality is permanent, and I'm never going to be the same again. I was convinced I was the only form of sentient life in the universe, and my sentience was waning. If I'm gone, there is no more life left. I'm it. The nightmare was not ending, and I needed to call an ambulance. I believed I would be in therapy for years, and it's time to just quit this fucking game right now. Will things always be this way now? a permanently broken mind and living in this eternal terror. I thought a neural bridge in my brain had snapped and I was bound to have this new distorted perception of reality for good. 
My phone was dead. There was no one to call. I needed someone to talk to, so I ran home back across town to my dad who was asleep. I felt like it was time to get the paramedics. Now, he had never done a drug in his life and he was furious when I woke him up. He told me to knock off this behaviour and take myself to the hospital or get to sleep. I didn't want to risk hospital bills or anything like that, so I decided to do some deep breathing and tried to wait it out. But I thought I had entered a new permanent state of psychosis no matter how long I waited. It's only 1.42am. I thought it'd be 5am, but time had slowed down, so this strangely made sense. In fact, it seemed like this experience would never actually end. Shrooms are in the tryptamine family after all, along with DMT or DPT, which have the same effect of removing time from the equation. I closed my eyes and had closed eye visuals of being in space, fireworks, ribbons of rivers passing by, and all kinds of indiscreet things I can't remember. I stepped outside and things were still moving around, but not as intensely. I lightly smoked a cig and paced back and forth constantly, hoping this won't be a perma trip because I never want to risk a psychotic episode again. If I had to relive that, I know I couldn't handle it again. Eventually, I fell asleep under the undulating blanket and woke up feeling like I just made a trek through the Saharan desert. This was a death blow. I was profoundly broken and shaken, though miraculously, things were back to normal. But the problems I tried to escape from and negative intrusive thoughts came back even more powerfully upon awakening. I worked out as hard as I could that morning to get endorphins pumping and things were changing as the day progressed. I felt this humility that I couldn't explain. It broke me completely, making all of my negative thoughts meaningless compared to this living nightmare I'd just gone through. I felt cracked open and broken. Have I been reset? Something reset. Something I can't quite put my finger on. People see my NPCs in a game to me. As I pan around, there's a new side to life. The insights I gained from this trip tell me a few things. One of them is how I think life began. I contemplated this as I thought I was the last person left in the universe. And if I was the last person and I had disintegrated, there would be nothing but chaos. Nothing but disorganised matter floating around in the very beginning of time. When people say that God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end, I dissected it further and realised there cannot be a fully constructed sentient life form as the very first thing to exist. The very first thing to exist would either be nothing or chaotic, incoherent matter. And what does that matter do over time? It coalesces. Opposites like puzzle pieces coalesce and build, and evolve according to physical and metaphysical laws. I don't believe these laws are created, but rather a description of how objects in reality interact, but they aren't created by anyone. This chaos at the beginning must have coalesced over time, to form further and more evolved sentience. Shrooms teach you that there is sentience in everything around us. Evolution is the constant. I gained this insight when I felt total aloneness and despair of an incomprehensible order. This is where love is born, or rather the positive spiritual bonds people form between each other, as well as the bonds one particle of matter forms with one another. In this aloneness, I, or all other matter, reaches out to another form of sentience to create a bond holding them together and building up. Love is born from despair. But then again, if we are in a simulation where we can think of everything alive as activated rather than alive, that would be more realistic. When code is run on a computer, the results of the code are processed and shown. The lines of code are the laws, and someone writes this code outside of the simulation, outside of the screen we can't see through, at least those of us who haven't been able to see through it. So maybe, mathematical law could be created and descriptive of reality, but what comes before that? Maybe the laws come from whoever or whatever sentience is in ultimate authority over anything else. But why did I have this experience? I wanted a blank slate of beliefs to form for myself and start anew from, but I think I partially got what I asked for. The beliefs that were broken are the idea that our lives are not the cage we imagine them to be. We can become crowded with all of these limiting beliefs people want to shove into your head, but beliefs are only due to our current perception of reality. Now that I unlocked a perception that everything, indeed everything, is alive around us, my perception has changed, and therefore, my beliefs. I came to notice that people are all part of nature, and usually when you're winning in life and expanding past your current potential, the universe supports you and the people that are a part of nature will react more warmly to you. 
When you're down, nature usually has a way of reprimanding you through any natural mechanism. Ultimately, our perception of reality may not be the correct view on reality. Though I perceived myself to be swallowed up by my environment, it was still a stagnant sidewalk, a stagnant house, a stagnant picture. Our perception must constantly evolve in order to find out what is real and what is not. I realised many of my negative thoughts and beliefs I wanted to get rid of before the trip were not even the reality at all. And I hope this helps people who are trapped in depression or in their mind. That it's only the nightmare your mind is creating, and it's just a bad trip that will eventually pass. While living in a shifting nightmare, it could just be a still room you're standing in, just as you're living through a tempest of thoughts. The reality of what thoughts are true could be completely different than what our clouded judgement says about ourselves.